Uh, why don't we start with Ayanna? Why don't you start us off here? Introduce yourself. We're going to go around the group because there's so many new people. A quick introduction, if you would, just to who you are, what business you're in, and your association or connection with me or Pete or Dan Kennedy. So, Ayanna, why don't you start us off? Um, well, my name's Ayanna. Um, I work with Dr. Scapolato. He's also on this call. Um, we run a dental office together in Oak Park. It's right around the Chicago area. Um, I'm also currently battling breast cancer um, last month. Uh, this month, I also had some scans done about two weeks ago. I had two tumors completely disappear, so everything is heading in the right direction, um, and everything's looking pretty stable. Good. Good. Excellent. Excellent. That's news we like to hear. Uh, yeah, so why don't we go to uh, Dr. Jim Scapolato next. That's not fair, Rod. <laughs> you knew it was coming. I, I thought you were going to pick me first. Oh, no, no. <laughs> we, we, pick, we, pick uh, the, we pick the uh, young lady first. You'll not have no trouble filling in anything with her. <laughs> anyway, uh, formally, Dr. James Scapolato, please call me Jim. Don't call me James because that's when I was in trouble. Um, I um, come to this through Ron, who we started some video work from my dental office. Um, obviously, you heard from Anna. Uh, we're in Oak Park. With any uh, small amount of luck, we're going to be moving my office at my young age and expanding to twice the size we have now because I'm tired of living with less than I need, let's put it that way. Uh, also have taken an idea from Pete with the world's smallest newsletter, or with Dottie to get that in effect. It took us a long time because we had to do the patient guide that's gonna go out as part of that. A patient guide request part of going out as part of that. So everything now in May is starting to kind of fall into place. Um, Besides that, that's me. Uh, and, Still and, working. I'm and, at the office today. And Jim, would you just a quick uh, thumbnail of the last year as far as your business, as far as growth? And, uh, you know, we hear in the media there's a lot of uh, businesses that are going out and so forth, but just a quick, quick little report on the health and uh, direction of your business over the last year and going forward. Well, it's been... I literally had to uh, reboot the practice about three times last year, once with the initial shutdown. Uh, even though I never shut down, I, um, I stayed open for emergencies, which has brought me a lot of new patients. Many bulk of the dentists in Chicago stayed out, so I was getting patients from all over. Um, then, uh, so we reboot a little bit after that in June, I get COVID and I'm out for 12 days in August. We kick back up after that. Um, so it's like three different times over the last year with the help of IANA. We probably only backslid about 10% in actual production. And as a side note, last year I had my best ever, best month ever since I'm in dental practice during the COVID. Good. Now, we're still affected today. We're still down. We have trouble getting staff that want to work because of COVID, because the government has given them, you know, extra incentive on un unemployment to stay home. Um, but the ones that I have working are absolutely fantastic. They are workers. They want to be here. And that's what's going to make this move work. Good. That's what you wanted to know. So where I'm standing, I haven't seen the big downturn that many other practices. I've even heard of some practices that have just basically shut down and went home. If, if you don't mind, I interject. We've actually had growth in some ways because of the emergencies. We've had different types of procedures doubling and tripling in revenue because of the type of procedure it is, we wouldn't be doing it unless it was an emergency situation. You know, it's a broken tooth. We're doing a lot more root canals and crowns. 
because the patient has an infection or a broken tooth that they're already coming in with, we don't really have to find that. So it's kind of also been changing where we are, where we're not seeing as much hygiene patients or recare patients, but his schedule's more full where it's typically the opposite, where people want to come in for their free cleanings and not get any work. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and uh, Jim, just a quick uh, follow-up. Last time we met, you had a, some a major staff issue. Has that been resolved, I assume? Yes. Okay. Thankfully, it resolved itself. Yeah, that, that's good. Well, thanks good. to the mastermind Better. for helping me to move forward. And it, including the fact that I have Diana pushing me all the time. Well, that, that's good news. Sit there so, way off our back, you know? I have fully yeah. bridged the gap between our medical and dental industry for diagnosis, protocol, procedures, everything. Um, wow. So we're really heading in a new direction too, which I'm really excited about. Very good. Good, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna go across the screen, so no particular order. Let's jump in with uh, Jerry. And uh, Jerry, hopefully I don't have to have you run this meeting like the last one, <laughs> and I get booted off. So uh, Jerry, 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 real quick, introduce yourself to the group, what business you're in, uh, where you're located at, and kind of a uh, state, of, state of the business uh, health as it is. So my name is Jerry Kaziah. I'm in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex area. We're in Plano, Texas, which is 18 miles north of downtown Dallas. Uh, I currently own four companies, uh, down from seven. We sold three. Um, my main business is auto repair. We own the largest independent repair shop in Northeast Texas. Uh, I also have a coaching and mastermind company uh, where we help business owners actually uh, get amazing results. Um, business is great for us. We're, we've been essential. We never shut down our mastermind, even during COVID. We had two meetings that were held via Zoom. The rest of them were all in person. Um, life is good. I don't know what to tell you. Life is good. Excellent. And I know I know you guys from, I'm hooked up because I've been a part of the Dan Kennedy's world since 2004. Don and I know each other. I've met Pete a couple times and you know, I'm just, I'm just an old gray beard. <laughs> and, and, and every day we get older, gray beard, or maybe not beard, but gray and less. That's actually good. You know, every day is good. I'm above ground. It's a good day. It is. It is. Excellent. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, let's go to uh, Ryan. Oh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, Ryan Kustner uh, just moved to Austin, Texas, along with the, uh, the rest of California. And <laughs> they're trying to make Austin the next San Francisco, aren't they? It's something like that. <laughs> um, Let's see. Uh, the business that I'm in, I, I, uh, I, I have a marketing agency that's kind of where I make a, a lot of money there. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, a lot of money, a lot of the percentage of my money. Uh, I also have a software development company, and then we build things. And then I have a, the shiny object disorder, where if you, if you give me an idea, I'll go and build it and without really justifying a market for it. So I got a problem there. Um, so I met or I got into this whole world through uh, Robin Robbins. Um, I had an IT company and um, Robin Robbins kind of introduced me to Dan Kennedy. And then I left the IT world before the information product world and the marketing after I learned about it. So um, 2020 was a, I mean, it was a, it was a rough year, but it was a great year for me. Uh, so I, uh, I, I did I did all right good so, good me. good thank you um, Scott Scott Bauman hello everybody from cold cold Colorado we had another massive snowstorm out where I live last night about six okay. inches just higher than that um, just outside Colorado Springs primarily what I focus on is uh, helping home builders with their sales process we also have a real estate brokerage company a property management company they do stuff in Colorado New Mexico and Georgia right now getting ready to expand into a couple other states um, still do have a small printing operation which unfortunately I've kind of let that slide a little bit because we are the biggest customer for that printing operation it's almost just like an in-house plant um, last year had our best year ever this year uh, February and March were the best months we've ever had April is 
looking like it's going to be the same. So there's no slowdown other than we're having a challenge in the home building world getting appliances, refrigerators, range ovens, microwaves. <laughs> we're having a problem with. Um, I first got introduced to Dan at a Peter Lowe success event in Denver in 1996, been involved in the Kennedy world ever since. Met Pete several years ago at a Dan Kennedy event and big fan of Pete and what he does and happy to be a member of this group. Good. Well, glad to have you. Um, let's jump <coughs> to Dan Cricks. Hi, my name is Dan Cricks. I am. I own uh, four different businesses. I run a local um, marketing group here. I was uh, trained and certified by Dan Kennedy a number of years ago to be able to do that. Uh, in fact, we just had our local meeting and we had somebody from New York. We get people from, from all over the country, actually Maryland a month before. I also work with the auto repair shops from all over the country. I've been doing that for about 20 years now, write four different newsletters. Um, business is, is, is good. Uh, initially last year when uh, shutdown started, my phone uh, blew up and uh, I worked overtime to take care of all those clients. And uh, 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 my consulting business, uh, helping other businesses to grow their business and grow their profits is doing very, very well. Also, a lot of client success and uh, that's what I enjoy, helping my clients take their businesses to the next level. Uh, I've known Dan for a very long time and uh, Pete, uh, what Dan taught me helped me take my business to the next level and helped me get involved in the information marketing business. Uh, I might have been one of Pete's first signups on the Elite Gold Crown. Uh, he caught me at the airport in Cleveland on our way to an event where he was going to introduce it and he sold it to me in the airport before we even got on the plane. And, How shameful. Uh, I know, it's terrible. <laughs> you, you wouldn't ride in the limo with me though. <laughs> well, I, I, I went and sat back down with my wife and I told her I just signed up and she goes, already? <laughs> so, uh, so I've been on board ever since and I write the Marketing Edge uh, newsletter that comes with your membership. Good. Thank you, sir. And uh, as an added, um, uh, my first uh, uh, experience with a mastermind was with Dan Crix's mastermind. So his group was the first group that I joined. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't one of the charter members, but um, all the people that are, are were in this group or are in this group have become lo lifelong friends. So that's one of the big benefits of of mastermind that I've taken away. Probably bigger than all the content and all the other stuff is the value in the relationships and the sharing of stuff beyond the actual formality of the mastermind. So thank you, Dan, for everything you've done and everything Pete's done and that Kennedy's done. So here we are today. Uh, let's move on to uh, further north of our border, probably where it's even colder, to uh, Richard Beckert in Canada. Good morning. You can hear me, right? Yep. Good. Okay. Good morning, I'm Rick Beckert. Uh, and uh, actually, it's quite nice here today. It's uh, going to be almost 70, so no complaints. Uh, we are just east of the uh, Rocky Mountains, um, which I can see if I look out the window. Uh, so I met Dan uh, in 1992, and he was actually uh, a little further north of where I'm now in Edmonton, and he was the keynote speaker introducing the 1993 Skidoo snowmobile models. Um, and of course, uh, with Dan, there's always a pitch on the stage, and I bought and uh, kind of stayed in touch on and off. Uh, over the years, I've had uh, that power sports business, a bunch of other ones. Uh, I had sold one, which due to a uh, mistake on my start, I ended up getting it back. But during that time, I, uh, I joined the uh, CMA program. So it came a little after when Dan was there at the time I met him. And I was in the Neal Tears group uh, for a number of years. And I'm pretty sure that's where I met Ron. I uh, met Pete at one of the, I think it was one of the Cleveland events. So I'm not exactly sure where that was. Um, now, um, as, as a result of one of the businesses I used to have, which was industrial coatings, I, I ended up speaking at a number of uh, global events for there and talking about marketing and how we had 
uh, taken one of our businesses and 10 exit in 39 months. Uh, that apparently was of interest with a lot of people. So I spoke about that a few times. And the first time I thought, of course, you have people come up to you at the end of the speech saying, can you do that kind of marketing for us? I'm like, no, 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 I'm just an industrial coder. I don't do that. Um, when it happened the second time, I was a little smarter. I said, yeah, absolutely. I can do that for you. And that was how we spun off our current business, which is Rogan Results Marketing. And uh, in 2020 was the best year ever. We picked up clients literally out of the blue um, that I had no idea. In the last uh, in the last 60 days, we picked up six new dental offices that we didn't have. So it's it's been you know um, as much as I hate to say it, because I feel guilty about it. Pandemic's been great for business. Um, and it's just you know it, you feel weird saying it, but I'm 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 over it. I actually feel pretty good saying it. So um, I'm looking forward to this group because I, I know a lot of you and you know I, I know about Jerry's business in, in Dallas and always kind of looked at that for inspiration when we had uh, one of the businesses I had was a Linex uh, uh, spray and bed liner business. Of course, there were things that Jerry had said from auto repair that spun off nicely with that. So I look at being able to um, uh, both contribute and uh uh, you know, take a lot of information out of this group. So, good. Thank you. Well, we're glad to have you. Um, let's go to the east to uh, our friends in Pittsburgh for uh, Janet and Charlie Pellegrini. Okay. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. It's great to be here. We um we came in through um we came to Dan Kennedy through Rory Fat because we had a restaurant business, um which. Rory taught us to work on our business, not in our business. So we rented it. <laughs> and um, so we're, we're doing better than ever. Now we're property managers. This is, this is what it looks like now. It's Sky Lofts um, Apartments. And uh, Charlie loves to make me business cards. So those are the Star Lofts. And I want to take a, the, our newest logo, which is like a big black and gold star. I don't have it printed for you right now. And put it on this cup. <laughs> and, uh, at, at the last meeting, they told us to um, uh, go ahead and um, reach out to the human resource departments in downtown Pittsburgh. And I'm going to give each one a cup filled with a little bottle of amaretto and a little bottle. <laughs> there's lots of room for some Baileys in your coffee in this cup. <laughs> and um, so I'm, I'm thinking of um, what kind of... Um, designed to put, you know, as far as our contact information. Of course, we have to list every kind of contact on there so that they can see that every day. Charlie? Yeah, I would like to add that. We, we, we swam upstream, as uh, Kennedy predicted, through Rory Fat, which is uh, his info marketer for restaurant industry, and uh, we left that business and uh, became, you know, property managers for our own properties. We do hard money lending as well on a smaller scale, but our uh, – dollar per hour spent on the, uh, what we do now is just, you know, infinite, really. Uh, yeah, I have that as well. But, uh, you know, I, I will say to, to talk about 20, uh, 20 uh, it's it's not been a growth year, but let's say in property management, we've had everybody pay. And in downtown Pittsburgh, it was a 90% reduction, uh, not my figure from the Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership in uh, not only uh, theater traffic, we're in the heart of the theater district, but also in business traffic from people staying home. And everybody is paid. We had to make just a little bit of concession on the uh, restaurant, which uh, replaced us, our Tampa Lady months, restaurant. Half, but yeah. uh, she's staying in the game and probably will, most likely will sign in for another 10-year lease and, uh, starting from uh, two years from this August. So, and we're I, we fully can, occupied. We're fully occupied. And that's <laughs> the other thing we were going to talk about with your small business card. Right. So thanks, uh, thanks, Pete and Ron, for the mug. And I want to thank also Monica uh, Mains for that nice uh, book. Yes, Monica. Uh, yes, that. thank you. That was very nice. Very good. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for making the book and <laughs> reading the book, hopefully. Absolutely. Absolutely. We also met one of the HR people in our fly fishing class. So now we're, um, we're actually, so I can actually um, give him some of our information. He's a, um, uh, a turning next door to our building downtown. So we're making personal contacts. We now. have a problem that we need the market in. Pete, Pete uh, and I talked about it where we need to fill, but we don't have a, a ton of units. We have very upscale boutique, but uh, 
we're all full and now we kind of got to, you know, back off to a lot, uh, some extent. I just develop the relationships with the, yeah. uh, with, with, with the um, people who are connected downtown. Good, good. So your, your 2020 in the past year has been good. You're at full occupancy. Yeah. Okay. Good, good. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Um, let's go all the way to the other side of the country to California to the one gal who has not left California to Monica. Yes, hi, hi everybody. Well, my name is Monica Main. I've known Dan since the mid '90s when he was part of Empire Communications back in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I'm in the business mostly of investment types of information publishing, such as uh, real estate, but mostly residential, commercial, or apartment building real estate info publishing. Uh, with the book that you guys got, I actually have a PBS taping coming up. It's going to be a show called The Main Way to Wealth to be able to raise money for PBS. That was actually supposed to take place uh, next weekend, but they kicked it out a little bit more because of COVID. They wanted the entire studio audience to wear masks, and my producer here in California said no. That's the whole reason why we're doing it in Atlanta, so we didn't have to wear masks. Um, because other, otherwise it's going to be a dated show in six to nine months. You know, we all know that. Yeah. Um, and with the PBS show, you typically tape it with the intent of it being more evergreen, which I think we all know what that means. Um, and we can't have an evergreen show with that. So um, unfortunately, the taping isn't going next week. Um, but hopefully, all this knows. Um, so that's all I'm on now. Go ahead. That's smart, Monica, because you have a wonderful product. And um, we were on a PBS show um, with the restaurant, and they ended up airing it like a Saturday every two months. And people would come into our restaurant and say, oh, I saw you today. So I actually had to keep my hairstyle the same for about two or three years because it was so evergreen. So you made the right decision. The taping cost about 80000 just with all the production and everything. So I just didn't want to spend that kind of money just to have to retape it early next year. It just made any financial sense to me, you know. So that's where I'm at with everything, and um, I hope everybody in this group got the book. And if I missed anyone, it's because you weren't on the list. So if you do want the book, The Lost Secret, I'll be more than happy to send you a copy if you did not receive one. Yeah, we have You did a, not get one? We have I did one. not. I was recently joined to Ron's mailing list as, like, my own, um, but I will definitely, I would definitely love a copy of it. Okay. Um, Ron, are you going to put her on the list so that I can send one out to her? Or I could just bring it because I'm coming out um, to see you guys next month. So if you're going to be there, I'll just bring some extra copies. With yeah, you. that would be great. Yeah, if you want to ship them to me, Monica, um, and then I'll bring them to the meeting. That's why you don't have to transport them. You want to ship them? Sure, to the okay. Um, I don't know if I have your address unless it's the one that's on the boxes you've been sending lately with the popcorn that I just got yesterday. If you want me to send it to that that's, address, that's I can the, That's the correct sure. address, yep. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so it is on Amazon, but you know, I guess you guys probably would like a free copy instead, and maybe, um, you know, so maybe I'd, it does the hardbacks um, a little bit harder to get these days. Uh, so you probably want that as well. So I'll bring those. Okay, that'd be great. Um, year, year, past year, Monica? Oh, the past year. Well, Good and bad. So everything kind of slowed down for me. I was actually getting kind of worried over the summer. I actually ended up taking an SBA loan, which I didn't expect that I would have to get because my business tends to do really well. And I think it's a lot of, because I, I really focus on the business opportunity crowd. And this is kind of what I wanted to change gears out of. This is what Dan Kennedy has been telling me forever, because I was part of his titanium group for like two solid years. And he was telling me, you know, to go with the higher echelon, you know, people with money. And so um, he's been telling me to go after the dentist market, which I'd like to talk to a couple of the dentists here because um, I want to find out what kind of periodicals or trade journals that you guys read because I might be targeting uh, the higher echelon crowd of people because I do target business opportunity people. So that was a problem. And Dan had warned me for many years that this was going to be an issue. Um, targeting these people because a lot of times when people are resting on their laurels, they were getting free money from the government, still are. Um, they have no motivation to, to try a business opportunity or to, to try some kind of um, financial enhancement in the form of investing in a business opportunity. So that's what I found was the issue. Um, so I had to borrow money from SBA, but thankfully by the fall, I mean, I was doing better um, in the fall and winter part of last year than uh, that made up for the entire year. 
um, and I'm doing better this year than I did probably the last several years. So um, it's all make, I think people are starting to realize that there is going to be a hard cliff that people are going to be falling off of. Um, it's not, I don't think it's going to be the roaring 20s like a lot of people believe. I do believe that there's going to be some uh, repercussion, some major economic repercussion for freezing the economy and, you know, doing all these bailouts and all of these different uh, funding programs. I do believe that there's going to be a hard cliff. And I think people are going to start to feel it, especially all these people that don't want to work. What's going to happen when the moratorium on evictions and foreclosures suddenly ends and everybody's going to be racing into court to do foreclosures and evictions and all of a sudden everybody's going to want a job. So I put a job posting out. I live in L.A. County. Normally when I put a job posting out for a new position, I'll get 80 to 100 applications. I got zero. Zip up. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's never happened in the 25 years I've been in business. Um, and so my theory is that people are just getting the free money. And so what's going to happen when everybody needs to go get a job? You're not going to have 5,000 applications. And what's going to happen to all those people looking for a job? They're simply not going to get one. Um, because the people that are working now are going to be probably pretty secure in their positions because they were riding the hard times with their employers. But the people that are looking for um, jobs trying to compete with 5,000 other people, uh, I think there's going to be hard times ahead. So I do need to start up in my game as far as focusing on, on people that are doing really well and getting rid of the business opportunity crowd like Ron LeGrand and other people in my space focusing on, which is, again, something Dan has been harping on me for many years now. So it's time. This is the year. So Yeah, well, you want to uh, uh, make sure that when we get together, uh, you talk with uh, Richard, uh, with the dentist, you talk with uh, Jim about Dentistrius and Iana. Um, and uh, Dr. Mark Sims is not with us today, uh, as I said, but you do want to talk to him. He's an audiologist in uh, Phoenix, and he's doing a lot of upper uh, targeting, and his business is doing well. So I think you're on the right track. And, and I've been there when Dan was you know, telling you all that. And of course you have. <laughs> I, I, can, I can tell you that, uh, like many of you, my business hasn't hurt one bit through this. And I'm going to we're going to talk about it in a bit, but just to tip it a bit is I, I attribute it to the right client as far as going to the right client because they aren't hurt by economic times. So, but we'll get into that discussion a little bit more. So thank you, Monica. Um, thank you. Melody, you're with Richard, you said, right? Quick, inter quick introduction. Okay, I'm uh, Melody Grant. I'm uh, Richard Bickert's uh, partner. Um, I, we are in uh, the the business is in Cochran, which is just outside Calgary, Alberta. Um, we have, uh, he introduced me to the GKIC world, um, I want to say 2005, but I can't remember for sure. Um, so um, I, I've uh, been included in the uh, Certified Magnetic Marketing uh, Advisors group as well, which is how I know Dan. Um, and uh, I, I know Jerry, but I think that's just because we were sitting in diamond lounges a lot. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and and I think I've met Janet and Charlie. Uh, I think we had drinks one night at a bar when there was nobody else doing anything. <laughs> Not sure. Can't remember for sure. But um, so we, um, as Rick said, we've we've been having a really good time uh, with uh, with getting work during uh, the pandemic. What he didn't say is at the beginning of it. We, we lost almost all our business because we were doing work for uh, part, of Shaw, uh, part of Shaw, um, doing uh, a lot of dental uh, copy and uh, infusion software. And uh, everybody just shut it all off at the beginning of the pandemic. So uh, we had to do some pivoting to, uh, to actually get to where we are now. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it has been uh, good for us because the people who uh, who are staying in business knew that they needed to do something different to make sure they stayed in front of people. So that's how uh, how they came to uh, our marketing company. Good, good, thank you. Um, let's jump to uh, Tom, Tom Burdick. I think your camera's off. Hello? There you are. Hey, um, can you... We can hear you. Okay, okay I tried to turn, turn my camera, camera on, is it come on? It's on. Okay, okay great. great. Apologies for that. Um, I'm in uh, Metro Atlanta, and I've, uh, I guess I was a, a subscriber to some of the GKIC stuff, and that's how I came to came to this group. And I've, uh, 
I'm a, I am ai have a real estate agent's license, and also I started into uh, freelance technical support, like marketing tools and setup. And that's that's the work that I do. Um, last year, I had to take. Uh, last year was there was a lot of uh, opportunities last year, but I did have to take some time out because my father was dying from cancer, and so I had a didn't have a great year last year. But I'm looking to make this one better. Good, good. Well, I appreciate it, and. Um, Let's jump to, um, I think, Rob. Rob Gillespie. Hey. How you doing? Uh, uh, Rob, Rob the house guy out of Northeast Ohio, the Cleveland market here for the last 24 years. Been buying and selling residential real estate, primarily to investors around the world. And um, not a lot of retail stuff. I'm in this group because of uh, Dan Cricks, which led me over to Pete the Printer, which led me over here to uh, Ron Sheets, the group here. And... Uh, Looking to, I'm not going to say transition, but I would say add as an addition plug-in to uh, the group. A, a lot like um, Monk was just talking about the uh, the consulting space. Uh, I'm not looking to do any of the zero-to-one crowd type stuff, none of the dream chasers. Looking for more of the affluent investors that are already investing. I can just clean up their portfolios and uh, make them better, kind of like a Merrill Lynch of real estate, if you will. And, uh, you know, that's how... I'd, for years, I've made my business is uh, buying people's problems. So I have, I'll have investors come in. They'll say I have 12 rental properties. They're not performing. I have bad management. I have issues. And for years, I just come in and just buy them. But now, a lot of times, there's properties outside of my market that I don't want to own and flip. So I can just consult them on them and say, here, here's how to fix the problem, to get them up and running, to give it a clean car fax, if you will, so you can sell them off or just happily keep them at that point. So. That's, That's what I'm looking at the other group. group. It's about consulting, consulting and reaching out to the right people, people with the right message. And um, can anybody tell, does Rob like money? <laughs> Rob likes <laughs> <it>. money. Yeah. <laughs> My, My Zoom, Zoom room. room. <laughs> Zoom room I love it. <laughs> so. It's his motivation. It, it's only, only my, my Zoom, Zoom background, background because I always had bad Zoom backgrounds. backgrounds. So, so I, I took a day and just built a good one for YouTube, YouTube videos and everything else. And uh, this is what I came up with. Oh, thanks. <laughs> There's all, all my wife buying me little art pieces and stuff. And even that little Monopoly piece she did, she, did, she says my logo on the mortgage says Rob the House Guy. And she owns a vodka company, so I put her vodka in the background. I'm not that big of a drinker to drink five bottles of vodka. Well, I just we bought we we had some of those little greenhouses from the monopoly board they you can buy bags of them to use them for lumpy mailers so it might end up being something you know it's funny i bought a bag of them too i bought them and i was using them and i was like setting them out like trying to visualize as i was buying houses i was putting them on maps and stuff and it just got too labor intensive so now they're just in my drawer <laughs> i did do the same thing i bought it on my monopoly pieces yeah so, Rob, uh, uh, last question. Over the last year, how's business been? Oh, amazing. Amazing. The pandemic was great to us. No, I'm, we're not doing any PPE loans, not doing anything. Um, they're still buying, selling. Uh, it's really helped me become much more virtual with like things like the Zoom room and things like this, where I'm buying and selling offline, becoming more of a real estate day trader. It's been good to us. I hate to say that. I know it's hurt a lot of people, but I... I do, I do think, think it's, it's like a K-shaped recovery. recovery. I think there's a certain amount of us that it's really escalated our businesses while other people fell off. But it's it's, it's been, been fine. fine. Yeah. Good, good. Um, and last, I mean, you, you all know me. You know Pete. Uh, Dottie, why don't you just do a, a quick, quick introduction? Well, I'm Dottie Sheets. I work with several of you on this page. Um, I work with Dan Cricks. Uh, I'm working with Jim and Ayana. Um, I have... Um, uh, I've been Ron. I was introduced to the GKIC world from from Ron. Uh, I was in Dan's uh, mastermind group when I was living in Cleveland, Dan Cricks. So um, I, I've been around this world quite some time, and I, I find it amazing how everyone on on the board, uh, with maybe the exception of Monica, because of the of the type of business that you have. Um, has done a great job in 2020 when the government has told us it was the worst year economically ever. So, congratulations, all of you. Thank you. Good. Well, with that said, um, there's two things. One, uh, one thing I want to mention is that a couple of you, as we've been going around, have uh, used the word guilty and talked about how you feel guilty about doing well when everybody else has not been doing well. And I think the only thing that I would want to add is stop feeling guilty, is that 
uh, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you, I hate the word deserve, but you deserve everything that you get and you only get what you go after working for. Um, I cannot speak to employees uh, because I don't have any, and that's been a conscious decision is that I refuse to have any employees for the rest of my career. But Yeah, he can't get rid of me. <laughs> well, you're not an employee. You're a 1099. Um, so so um, I would say stop apologizing or stop feeling guilty about being successful. Is that as a success, you're willing to do what other people aren't willing to do to be successful. So you shouldn't apologize for having that kind of work ethic and that kind of success motivation. So the first thing I would say is stop feeling guilty. Is that you? Can I add to that, Ron? Yes. I can. I totally agree with that, especially in our industry. When the pandemic started, we were getting all of the emergency patients from other doctors that were closing, but we were also getting all the complaints about the other doctors as to why they didn't want to change, whether it was they weren't being accommodating of them before the pandemic. But I would say 90% of the patients we were getting in, new patients for COVID, they had issues with their previous dentist pre-COVID, and then their office is shutting down and they're having all this pain and emergencies. It just didn't work for them and they came to our office and it just speaks to those other businesses practices and whether they're ethical or not. I know there's some businesses that are out there that, you know, didn't deserve to shut down and that they are ethical, but for the most part, there are issues within those businesses and it just shows that we're all on the right track doing the right things. Yeah. I got an analogy for it. It's. Olympic, Olympic winners, winners do, do not, not feel guilty, guilty for winning because they put in all the hard work and they deserve it. And the people who don't do the hard work, you feel bad for them, but oh well. Well, if you, if you look at society in general, if you post on Facebook, you can post that you lost weight and everyone's going to congratulate you and they love you. You can post you got into a college, everyone loves you for it. Go in there and say, post, hey, I made an extra $10,000 this week. You have crickets. Nobody's going to talk about it. Right. That's society. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Rob, I, I hate during the pandemic, pandemic that, you know, the landlords and, uh, you know, the real estate people are the bad guys, you know, and all this uh, thing with the postponement. We haven't had evictions, and that was by design. That's the selection process that we go through. But, uh, you know, I know many people that, you know, either you got to pay the property taxes and all the unwanted expenses and maintenance, and you can't, if they're not paying, and sometimes they game the system, not a lot. But sometimes, sometimes. Like, like I said, ours has been great. great. Uh, we yeah. have great relationships. You're right. They 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 told us that that we don't we're not allowed to collect our rents or whatever. We're not allowed to enforce that. But we but we are enforced upon for all of our property tax, our new park tax, library taxes, all that are still there. You know. Yeah. You've seen that too. Uh, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah I've seen it. And, and, and you know, it is a problem that we're all running into. Uh, I, I don't think it's as big an issue. I think a lot of the courts, what they're making people, at least in Cleveland, do is go and apply to get help. So there's a lot of government money that if you were to kick them out, all they have to do is apply to get the to get the money, and the, the government will send us you know, five months back rent or whatever. Oh, I have to do that, baby. I did take a little bit of a concession. Oh. Yeah. No, they'll do it. They just go apply. They'll get, the government gives you your money. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, but they, they don't, don't realize that once this is all over, that money they, they got, got from the government, they're going to have to pay back in taxes. <sighs> it, it, it's <laughs> That's a bigger problem than we can discuss on here. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I know. It's a big problem. problem. It's, it's a huge, huge problem, problem we have going on. But that's, that's okay. okay. Just ride it while it's around. Just make more money. That's what I say. There's, there's <laughs> the answer. There's the answer. Uh, and I want to go back on something that Monica had mentioned earlier uh, with regard to the cliff. Um that I agree with you, Monica, that there is going to be a cliff that people are going to fall off of. <clears throat> However, I think that there's also going to be the exact opposite. There's going to be the floodgates are going to be open because society as a whole, having been cooped up for a year, they want to get out. We're already seeing evidence of it, but they're wanting to get out and they're going to want to be spending money and being properly positioned, being properly uh, the right language, the right um, 
marketing, the right message, and so forth, uh, will really, I think there's going to be a floodgates. And as Ayanna had talked about with the, the patients leaving the other practices and coming, there's a lot of that, and there's going to be a lot of that mixing going on. And now is the time to be doing the marketing. Now is the time to be putting the messages out. And because we're all successful, we have the ability to do that. And we have the right messages to be able to do that. And a lot of the competitors are going to be left in the dark wondering why you're getting it. And they're not. And it's going to be simply because it's the right voice to the right audience. It's Kennedy's uh, uh, marketing mix. Message marketing. Uh, mark you got it. Message match media, media match uh, so I, I think that is that we maintain that mindset number one is that we're successful and we're going to be more successful one of the observations that I will also make as we go around this group and it's the reason that Pete and I wanted to start this group was that you're all of the right mindset you're all of the right success mindset not the woe is me this this group, if you go around this entire group, this is a group of problem solvers. And that's what our clients need, is they got a problem and we solve their problem, whatever our particular category or niche is. So that's the, the, the big thing that I want to emphasize is, is that don't be sorry for being successful. Enjoy it. Uh, th this, group, uh, this group is intended to be that life support, if you will. Many of you are in other life supports. I know when I was in Dan Crix's mastermind, that was the big surprise to me was how much you got and fed off of other people. So uh, we're uh, the reason that we're going back to live meetings uh, eventually when all of this breaks away, we'll do less of these because it's a little more cumbersome. Um, I absolutely hate these things. I was just right. in Nashville uh, last weekend. Uh, to my client Marty Fort's event. He was doing it live with people in the room as well as doing it virtual. And um, it's a problem. It's, it's a challenge. I know Dan Cricks has been doing meetings a lot uh, virtually. There's just not the dynamics. There's just not the uh, association and relationship that we pull from this. So um, with that said, I want to jump into a question that I've gotten. I know it came from uh, Rich in, uh, Rick in, in Canada, and that was about next month if we're going to live stream the event because I know Rick can't come because of the travel out of Canada into the U.S. And Pete and I have talked about it, and we've made the decision that we're not going to live stream the Mastermind meeting primarily because there's there's a lot of loss in what we get from being in the room with one another uh, we are going to record it so it will be available uh, but we're not going to live stream it so that we don't have that extra added challenge as it goes on but also so that everybody can get the full benefit of being in the room um, can i get a so monica you mentioned that you are coming next month uh, I know um, uh, Jim and Ianna said they're coming. Uh, uh, as we go around the room here, uh, by a just an acknowledgement, uh, who's coming to the live in-person mastermind? So we've got I'll be there. Dan Crix, we've got Scott, we've got Janet, and... and uh, I need to know more around. about it, Ron. Okay. I haven't seen it. Okay. As far as where, where, where it's at or the timing? What are the dates and where? the date? The dates are, the date? it's May 19th and 20th. Where are we staying? You will, this is the location here, if you can see it on the screen. We're going to be at the Doubletree Hilton in Independence, Ohio. There's the uh, contact information. Um, I can't see their phone number. The date is what now? It's the, it's the 19th and 20th of May. I have that in there. Yep, yep, I have it in there. Yeah, 19th and 20th of May, and I'll send out I'll send out the information again uh, after the meeting with all of the details with the link to the hotel. Um, the hotel is not overly busy, as you could imagine. None of them are, so there's right. plenty of space in order to get reserved. But I would go ahead and make your reservations as soon as possible. Uh, it's about I don't know what do you what do you think? It's probably it's no more than 10 miles from the Hopkins International Airport. Um, 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes. So it's easy to get to. There are no shuttles running. So if you don't get a car, then just do Uber or 
you know, some car service or something in order to get there. But there are no shuttles running from the uh, hotels yet here in the Cleveland area. Um, we will be doing, uh, we will be starting at breakfast at 7.30 in the morning. We will start the meeting at 8. Uh, we will run until at least 5 o'clock on each of the days. We'll probably finish up about 4 on the 20th. Um, breakfast and lunch will be provided. Everybody's on their own for dinner, though we will be getting together. Uh, uh, Pete and I and some other guests are going to go to a, a little local place in uh, Independence, uh, Steakhouse in Independence. Everybody's welcome to go, but it's not mandatory. Um, it's the best steak you'll ever eat. <laughs> which part, which place it's called? Harry's Steakhouse. I'd like to point out, I'm, I'm from Alberta. Alberta. I'm, I'm going to dispute that. that. Yes, I, well, you, you can. <laughs> to be fair, Melody, I haven't been there, so maybe I'll have to go there and try some food. Sounds good. I'm from Texas, and I'm going to dispute that. <laughs> I, have, I haven't had Texas food. In... I, I actually am with Jerry. <laughs> I'm from Florida, and I'm not going to dispute that. So I'm a vegetarian, and I don't really give a damn. So <laughs> there's some. They've got some great seafood. That, that was the other thing I was going to ask, Ron. Anybody that has any special dietary need, please reach out to me. So as I set up the menu, I will make sure that we have you covered. Yeah, and I'll have I'll have her information in there, and uh, just so we can get a final count on it. Um, I wanted, hey, Ron, I just wanted to say I appreciate you and Pete sending me my airline ticket to be able to attend. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, well, both you and Rob got one. Yeah. First class. Right. What do you got? Are you going with a helicopter? Uh, that's exactly it. Yeah. No, it was, it was called Google Maps. That's what the airline ticket was. So um, while we're talking about the mastermind, um, we're going to do a usual mastermind for those that are new to the group. It's going to be a hot seat situation. Everybody will get roughly an hour hot seat to go around the room and talk about your business and get feedback and input from everybody else. Um, I have made arrangements. This is, this is going to be a real value. Uh, some of you in the group know him, but I've made arrangements for a friend of mine who's coming in out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Let me see if I can bring, bring this up. But if, if, a friend of mine is uh, Rick Neiswanger. He is a serial entrepreneur. He's been around Dan Kennedy for a long time. He's been back even as far as Gary Halpert. He's hired both Gary Halpert and Dan Kennedy to write copy. Um, Rick, for many of you that have get my newsletter, you've heard me write about uh, the erectile dysfunction businesses that I've been involved in. These are these have been Rick's businesses. Rick has been, uh, for all the time I've known him, I've known him since I was 13 years old. He's been in the information marketing business. He's been in the biz op business. Um, he transitioned into the bricks and mortar business, not by choice. Uh, and Rick will tell more about this story, but I'll give you a little bit. So Rick has been uh, banned by the Department of Justice, the Federal Department of Justice, from ever selling coaching or information products ever again. Uh, because of some trouble that he got into with regard to partners in that. But Rick is going to be with us. Um, he's going to have about an hour to talk. I've asked him to talk specifically about reinvention, reinventing your business, reinventing yourself, uh, because it's something that I have seen him do no less than five or six times in all the time I've known him. Um, Rick, uh, the first iteration of the men's uh, erectile dysfunction clinics that we worked on, uh, Rick took it from zero to 37 million a year in 18 months, uh, all on the backs of direct response marketing. Um, this particular book that you see here, which Rick wrote, uh, I will tell you, so you're at least, uh, you know it, uh, but Rick has spent jail time um, in regards to some of the troubles he's gotten into with the Department of Justice. Uh, in fact, in, uh, in many of you that know Gary Halpert, and you're familiar with the Boron letters that Gary wrote from prison. Um, I actually visited Rick in September of 2018, I think it was. I actually visited Rick at a federal uh, prison in uh, Oregon, and we spent the day masterminding uh, in the prison. And I said to Rick, I said, you know, this feels very reminiscent of Gary Halpert, you know, and uh, 
but you guys will you guys will enjoy Rick. Uh, he's a smart smart guy. He speak he's spoken a couple of times at Dan Crix's chapter meetings. Uh, but Rick is coming, and I've asked Rick. He's gonna oops wrong one. He's gonna send a, he's gonna send a copy. Everybody will get a copy of his new book uh, with regard to that. And he has an amazing sales system, which is really what has driven his success all of these years. So I'm excited for you guys to meet Rick. Uh, he's going to talk, and we'll have some time for Q&A. He'll be around with us the whole meeting, so you'll be able to kind of network with him and that. Um, and Ron, that, that brings up the point about when Kennedy says, uh, if you're not pissing people off every day, you're not marketing hard enough. Well, you can really crank to the next level. If you haven't been to jail for your marketing, you're nobody. I'm just <laughs> one, one of the things that I would encourage you guys to talk to Rick about offline at the meeting is talk about the things that you shouldn't do in your business. Because believe me, he's become very well versed on the things you shouldn't do. Uh, Monica, I'm kind of excited for you and Rick to, to meet up because of your experiences and what you've done. Uh, I'm sh I know there's some stories that you can tell and I know that Rick will enjoy meeting you and hearing some of your stories. Uh, the businesses that you've been in. So uh, I'm just wondering if, if he could top the four years I did in federal prison for my marketing stuff. Yeah. So that's we'll, why I'm. That's we'll, why I'm saying you guys. You guys will have some stuff in common to talk about. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know how you handle it, Monica, with regard to that. But Rick and I've talked at depth. One of the things that he's done, and it's in the book, is that he's talked about how he has hid from that most all of his career but unfortunately as you know you can't really hide from it and what he's done is he's come out and faced it and tells it and interestingly enough it's a real big connector um yeah. with people yeah. yeah yeah i mean, I mean, I mean for, for the for the longest, longest time i was running away from it and then that's, that's when, when i decided to put it in the book the lost secret, secret because i'm like, like you know people are going to find out yeah you might as well just hit it head on and i found that when i do that um people are less judgmental i think because i think everybody's got skeletons in their closet at some level yeah and so um i think people appreciate the honesty and they just want to know like what happened you know and i think now more than ever i mean i think a lot of people know that i'm not a trump supporter which is one of the big reasons why dan and i would get into it sometimes but um, but one of the things i have to agree with trump on is that there really is a one-sided system and it is really stacked against you so any of you that are su successful in your businesses i mean i commend you triple because i don't think you realize how difficult it is sometimes to be successful because the cards are stacked against you um in a lot of ways that you don't realize there's a lot of things going on politically uh, legally and so it's almost like a landmine that you constantly have to dodge you know as you walk through on a daily basis and many, many of you might not realize how bad it is sometimes <laughs> unless you've been in the situations that i've been in yeah but, um, to add to that monica it's being where i'm in i see the healthcare side i see you know from the business owner standpoint since i have that opportunity as a manager to see that since it's my grandfather who's the business owner and i have the opportunity to learn things as a very young entrepreneur and business owner so that in the future i can start my own businesses i'm actually starting my own business plans right now to open up some different types of businesses but i see it in the disparity and the way my patients are treated and the stories they tell me and how they're treated medically i can tell you that i've been traumatized by modern medicine totally um there's it's, it's a, a huge, huge system, system failure, and, and I absolutely, absolutely agree with everything you're saying, and I see it in other perspectives, too, in my own personal life, and it's also affected the way I practice, and the way I practice is I look at, I get treated at Mayo Clinic, and I look at everything, okay, what's Mayo Clinic doing? They're the leaders. What's Cleveland Clinic doing? What's um stanford doing and i'm looking at what all these great hospitals are doing and i'm taking their policies and protocols and adapting them for dentistry so that we are looking at their medical side because it's so important to treat and i totally see that disparity and where you're coming from with that yeah um just a different perspective of what you're saying um, I actually enjoy learning from people who have gone to jail or been fined or been told they can't do certain things because I don't have to do that part because I learn from you guys. 
it, it's, it's a great, great uh, it, it's, it's horrible that you guys have gone through it, but it's a great way for us to learn what not to do. We were the guinea pigs, unfortunately, but you know, it, came, it comes down to just a lot of no knowledge out there. Nobody ever talking about it. I think it's been taboo up to this point. And then I think just in the last few years, just everything that's been going on politically and legally, um, you know, it's, it's just more out there now. The system being truly rigged. It was something that people just were never talking about. And now it's okay to kind of bring it up because people now realize that they're getting the short end of the stick in a lot of ways. And so um, I think people resonate with that more now than, than ever. Yeah. As so, Monica, if I could say one thing to you and, and I'm not going to challenge you on not being a Trump supporter, but if there's nothing else he did was bring that out, how the system is rigged and shown how our political system, our government is rigged against the average American trying to make a living and especially against small business. I think he bringing that out to light, you said in the last few years, it's, it's been, been more accepted, accepted because people, people are now realizing that just because you went to jail for something like that doesn't mean you did something wrong, okay? okay. It just means that you went up against a rigged system. Well, that's true. And then the other, uh, the other argument, though, that I have with people, because sometimes when you're dealing with people that are just biz off tire kickers, is that, oh, well, you know, if you've ever gotten sued, there's something wrong with you. It's like, no, if you've not gotten sued, you've never been a business yet. So it's like... If somebody's not gone, gone after you for something, something you've, you've not done, done nothing. nothing. You know what I mean? Um, so, so that's my argument. But you're right. It, it, it is 100% rigged against people. And I really do like the fact that he did bring a lot of things to light that would probably continue to be buried had maybe Hillary Clinton or somebody else gotten in office back then. So I do appreciate that about it. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Good point. There's two 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 things that, that have come from our um, experiences. One of them is actually, I've had an interview with um, David Scott Peters, who was in the restaurant um, uh, consultant business, about uh, the three days I spent with the Department of Labor and, um, you know, how you can pay play $25,000 pyramid with them and every every question you get wrong, you get fined. And <laughs> so um, he did an interview with that. That's on a CD. I don't know if we can if we can resurrect that. But um, it's too painful. I don't. It is painful. But anyway, but there's a lot to learn from mistakes, like you say. And luckily, we we came out without a fine. But um, it, the other comment I have is from um, a politician, McGovern, who was running years and years ago. And when he got out of politics, he and his wife decided to open a little bed and breakfast up in uh, up in. New England. New England. And um, when he started trying to open this little bed and breakfast, which, you know, like you say, has hotel rolls, has restaurant rolls, has, he says, boy, I would have signed differently if I had done this first. And that's why I, when I vote, I don't vote according to Republican, Democrat, or whatever. I want to vote for people who've actually had a business. If they've had a business, they, they know, know a lot, lot more about, about what it takes, takes to run this country, country right. That's true. Yeah. That's so true. you bring up a good point, Monica, that I want to mention, is that when we get together in the live events, it's a no-judgment room. So when you come, um, I know each of us has our own political beliefs and positions and so forth, but that's not why we're there, and yeah. it's not a political situation. So as Monica said, some of us will differ greatly on politics, but that's not why we're in this group. It goes back to we're in this group in order to make money and we're in this group in order to be successful. So when you come, it's going to be a no judgment room. Uh, you, we can discuss it, but I think as Monica pointed out, we can learn from it. Um, I don't remember who it was I heard say it is, is that I don't, I don't have to experience bankruptcy to appreciate it if I can learn it from somebody else. So, um, Something I had told Jim, too, is when we had started, you know, for us, patients are always asking us politics, you know, what our stance is, how are we reacting to things in our community, and how do we feel about things. And the one thing me and Jim have always talked about is that we're always on the side of the person that we're talking to because we see things on both sides. And even though we're going to vote for one person specifically, that we do agree with both sides so we should be able to openly talk about it and I think 
there's always going to be two sides of a story to look at no matter what story you're telling. But I think it's important that whatever place we're in, whether we're on a Democrat or Republican party, no matter who's running the country, we have to understand who's running the country and how the political game is being run state by state so that we can make that work to the best of our advantage and make more money for our businesses. Something I think I, Jim would be okay with me talking about is Jim's a very opinionated person that he's been able to put aside in the last three years when it's come to the business and his opinion his personal opinions greatly affected the way he practiced and ultimately really was a deciding factor in how we were going to move forward and since we've both been able to put that aside and really just look at what's good for the business when Biden was elected president, we said, how are we just going to make this work with, you know, we know taxes are going to go up no matter what, no matter who is president. How are we going to make that work and make more money so that we can just keep succeeding? It doesn't matter the value except in our personal lives and business. It should be about our clients and the values that are for our business. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to curb this so that we don't get into more of a political discussion, but you're 100 percent right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's in the White House. They don't affect other than taxes and so forth what we do in our businesses. So my position has always been go out and make more money in order to pay the dang taxes because this, too, will pass, as have the four years with Trump passed and so forth. So um, let's move on. Uh, I want to spend about 30 minutes if we can. Uh, anybody have any questions to pose to the group from a marketing, business growth, problem, employee, any, anything that somebody wants to bring to the group for open discussion? Uh, first, first, I, first come, first serve. I have something that ties back to what Monica said in the beginning with employees and getting all of these applications. One of my bigger concerns is the quality of people coming in something when i was in ohio with ron last month we were i was shooting some videos to do employee training um more about our handbook policies to get them familiarized with the office and basically ultimately make a series of training videos um and we were talking about how to get quality employees what do you besides recruiting um all of my, all of the best employees that I've worked with over the last three years have been employees that I've recruited with absolutely no dental experience. What would you guys recommend me do to sort of navigate through resumes? I have some experience in hiring, but I'm better at recruiting people than hiring them based off their resume. Uh, if I could share something with you. <clears throat> You asked, asked about, uh, uh, basically, basically, you're looking, looking to attract a better quality application, application am I right? Mm -hmm. well, well, that comes down to marketing. Uh, and you can address that in your ads, uh, how, however, or wherever you're doing them. Uh, you can basically, by the way, by the copy and the language, uh, call out to those higher quality applicants and, and let those, those others know, know that this isn't for them. them. And, and one, one of the things, things that, I, that I've done, I, I, I've had a lot of success helping uh, repair shop owners find quality technicians, which is very, and Jerry can, can attest to this, very difficult. There's a, such a shortage of technicians. Um, and one of the things that we were able to do is, is we crafted ads with the right language that basically says, if you're not top notch, don't apply here. Okay. And then the other thing I would share with you is to help you sort through all those applications when you do start to get them. We developed like a seven question system that we would ask them initially and they would kind of disqualify themselves. So it was short and quick. And, and you, you, you know, know you know what those questions, questions should be that will send red flags for you right away. Uh, uh, just to give you one example with technicians, one of the questions we ask before we even talk about setting an interview is how much do you have invested in your tools? 
Well, well and, and Jerry can tell you, we know right away based on that answer if we want to go, that one answer, if we want to go any further. But we had like, I developed seven different questions because I was in the business. And we're able to eliminate most of those folks that still come in that, that, that we know we don't want any part of, which cuts down your time. Uh, that, that, that you're, you're spending. spending and, and you, you can, can have anybody, anybody if you've got someone answering emails or phone or whatever you could have any of them answer, ask those questions and give, give them a score if they if they, if they answer, answer three, three of these the wrong way, way uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let, let you know, know and that's the end of it mm-hmm. and I'd be happy to talk with you about that more if you want just to help you just to help you IQ marketing test <laughs> we also kind of did some things that Ron had suggested. You know, Ron had suggested doing some different things and putting it in the job description. Um, it kind of worked. The issue was is that no one did it, which obviously none of them were qualified for. It's just getting those quality people to even apply for the jobs. And I know, go also going back to what Monica said, I also know they don't want to work. So it's like, how how do I balance balance being short-staffed but not having the quality employees? So it's like, I really need somebody and I'm going to be waiting, you know, maybe two, three months to wait for the quality employee, but my schedule can't handle that. The worst worst person you want to hire is somebody who's looking for a job. Um, You're... And again, I'm not an employee person and so forth, but as Dan talked about as far as marketing um, you always want to be recruiting and you want to be recruiting from people who are already working yes it means stealing them away from somebody else but there's a, a friend of ours Dan Cricks and mine a guy by the name of John Formica who is a former Disney cast member ran many of the resorts in the Orlando area came from Marriott and uh, John tells the story of the best employee he ever hired came from Dunkin Donuts in that he went into this Dunkin Donuts every morning for coffee and this woman was fantastic it took him I think two years but he finally recruited her away so my point is is that you always want to be on the lookout for who is the person that is serving you that's giving you great service that has a great personality that fits your mold and you need to start that conversation with them as far as being able to hire them away now the other employees, uh, employers aren't going to like it and so forth. But don't always be looking for employees who are looking for a job. Yeah, yeah I, he, is, he is. Ron, Ron is so right, right on that. And, and, and in, in, in our technician world, there, there are, are no, no good, good technicians, technicians looking for work. work. There, there just aren't any. Okay. okay? And, and so, so we're going at, at them all, all the other places where they are, are if you will. will. Okay, okay. We're, 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 they're, they're hanging out or people who are hanging out with them. them. That's how we're finding them. them. And we're, we're having pretty good success with them. That's one of the reasons a lot of the help wanted ads don't work because the good ones aren't looking. Yeah. Okay. And, and, you know, Ron talks about stealing the way I look at them as presenting them with opportunities. And it kind of goes back to what you said, Ayana, about the, the, uh, emergency, emergency patients, patients you got. You learned when you got them, them they, they already, already weren't happy with the practice, practice they were at before. That's one, one of the reasons you were able to get them away long term. Same, same thing. thing. Same thing. If they're, if they're not happy where they are, not all practices, practices as you know, are run as well as yours. People, people aren't respected as well as you do. And so you're looking for those opportunities for those good people. Most Most of them, like Ron said, said, are not looking for work. One of the strategies that we did in the door-to-door canvassing selling industry was we were always recruiting for people to go knocking door-to-door in neighborhoods. And the strategy that we did, now we were pulling from high school, college-age students, but you can do the same thing in business, is we always told anybody that responded to a job ad is that we suggested that they bring with them a friend or two to the recruiting meeting so that they had a fresh set of eyes and they had a fresh set of ears because when we're doing the interview it's as much an interview of you 
it's as much of an interview of us as it is of you. And it's always helpful to have an extra set of ears there because they'll hear things that you won't hear. And they can give you insight into things that you may not hear or be seeing it from a different perspective. That was our story. But the whole reason for doing it was the birds of a feather flock together is that what ends up ha what ended up happening is is that the person that was with them said hey this is this sounds great i really want to i like to find out more about this and oftentimes we ended up hiring more of the come alongs than we did with the original applicants now it may not be applicable to every business but even if somebody already has especially if they're in that industry they come along and they give their perspective Again, you can, as Dan put it so politically correctly, you can open up their opportunities. So that makes, makes it sense because they're more motivated. motivated perhaps perhaps that they even would come, come along with a friend. friend. That's, that's just that's, that's a screening device in and of itself. itself. Yeah, yeah. So is that helpful, Ayanna? Yes, very. Thank, thank you. you. Anybody else? Any other subjects, topics you want to discuss? I'd like, like to talk about online, online marketing, marketing if, if you don't mind. mind. Nope, go ahead. 90 to 95% of what I do is direct mail marketing. But I've been trying to balance some of the online platforms because, I don't know, maybe a part of me feels like I should be on, online somewhere. Um, but I just found that the people online are much more flighty now. There's a lot of changes that are happening with Facebook right now. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of the lawsuit that they had with Apple that they lost. I think, I think effective June 30th, they're not going to be able to do the same kind of tracking that they were able to do. So a lot of your Facebook people are going to be uh, falling off completely. Um, so what's happening now is that they're all going to YouTube video advertising, which is something that I've been able to sometimes make work depending on my offer. But now every every Tom, Dick, and Harry from Facebook is now going over to YouTube Google Ads advertising right now. So I wanted to see if anybody had any specific experience with Google, Google ads, uh, the YouTube, YouTube video ads, ads and, and if they have any comments, comments about it to, to, to be able to scale it or make it work better through both keywords and, uh, you know, YouTube video or video, video placements. Does anybody, anybody have any, any comments about that? Uh, I don't have a lot of experience on it, but uh, Dan Cushell, um, who's from the Dan Kennedy world, uh, he has a really good training on his website, growthtofreedom.com. I think it was, it was like three, three weeks, weeks ago. ago. I can send you the link to the episode in the chat. chat. I'll go look for it here in a moment. Um, he talked very specifically about ways he did video ads um, and did tracking on YouTube. So, so <laughs> five days ago, and uh, I'll be glad to send you the link. I'll look for it right now. Okay. And he scaled many businesses to like 10, 15 million a year, so he knows how to scale offers. Um, something that I'm not super familiar with um i do have some research that i haven't completely dove into yet with it um there's a lot of people who are using TikTok. um it's more of an entertainment thing um but you would make money more based on views likes and following which is why i don't like it because you obviously want quality people um, and, um, and it's, it's something, something I wouldn't be able to do in my industry to get patients, which is also why I haven't tried it. But I do know a lot of financial experts, and there's a lot of people on there that are experts that are working from home, that are offering their services through social media, using the same types of videos that the younger people are doing. Um, just because with everyone being home, what, what I've noticed, noticed more, more because of my age, age um, I am 22, so I'm more closer to the Gen Z range than anything else. else. Um, but, but I was raised by uh, Dr. James Scapolato, who's sitting in the chat, chat so, so I have a lot of his values instilled in me. In me. Um, and, and what, what I've noticed is that a lot of the parents of these kids are getting the TikTok trends and they're seeing all these social media trends and the parents are starting to follow it because their kids are showing them these videos. My mom is starting to send me videos. My mom has an MBA and a master's in HR and she's sending me HR videos from TikTok that are teaching me about HR. So a lot of I don't know how to say this but my generation is getting my, my grandfather's, grandfather's generation, generation involved in the social media, media and, and I'm not sure of the way to go about it, but I do have other people and resources who are very good at going about it. 
I'll just, I'll just say this, though. My attorney sends, sends me TikTok, TikTok stuff all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm not on TikTok at all. all. There's, There's some, some good stuff on there. there. I know you, I know you said that. Did you, did you say YouTube, YouTube wouldn't work for your business? business? Um, TikTok wouldn't work for my business. Okay. okay. I, don't I don't know that. that. I know YouTube. Anyone, I mean, YouTube's the second to Google for, like, doing search engines. So someone's saying how to solve a toothache or how to do whatever the heck. You came on a pre-roll before that. I think in your geographic area, I think that would bring people. Yes. But um, it's, we, it's funny, funny you say that because Connor, Connor, which is in Dan's group, group with me, he and I, we are, we are just now, I, I am burned out beyond belief on Facebook. Facebook, Facebook, Facebook has kicked off my personal account. account. They, they started, started charging me when I, to run ads, ads when I wasn't running them. them. It, was it was just, just I burned through a lot of cash on Facebook. I did make money on it, but they changed their algorithms and their things so frequently. It's a guessing game. It's like it's like sitting at the blackjack table. You don't know if you're going to win or not. Mm -hmm. um, so, so actually, actually today, today was taking time right now on this. this. After, After this, I have to go shoot, shoot my YouTube, YouTube video for Connor, and, and we're starting that exact, exact thing. thing. We're going to start using YouTube for our um, our pre rolls and, and stuff for buying, buying houses. houses. But I think so, yeah, that, that that is, is the big thing right now. But but Monica, was your question about how to drive to the YouTube ads and that? Well, I, I was consulting with this one guy. I don't know if anybody's heard of Valerie Heck. And so I basically subscribed to his higher end thing, which is like a $10,000 training. Yeah. And even the guy knows his stuff a lot. You know what's but funny? Monica, you just said that name. I texted Connor and asked him. I said, who's our guru that we're using? And it's Alaric Heck. It's ad outreach. <laughs> That's who we're following. But you know what I'm frustrated about with, with his uh, program is that whenever you're consulting with anybody in his, um, in his, uh, you know, in his world, his business, is that you're stuck with dealing with some lower end, you know, $10 an hour employee who just basically tells you to watch some, one of the, you know, one of the videos, you know what I mean? It's like, well, if I'm Sam I'm stuck, there's a reason I'm calling, it's because I'm freaking stuck. It's not like I want you to tell me what video or what week to go look at, you know, as far as the program goes. And so, and so that's, that's the frustration, frustration I have. And the other frustration is what Alec, I think, is leaving, um, leaving behind. He's leaving a lot of money on the table because who is who's targeting are busy business owners. So why hasn't he opened up a thing where he can do these, these ads for people rather than having these busy business owners figure all this out for themselves and good luck? And so um, I don't know. That's the frustrating thing is, is that you have these really sharp, entrepreneurs that just don't fully figure it out and in the meantime they're just leaving us hanging out to dry so i'm just that that's what i thought well did, does, does anybody have any uh, scaling uh, opinions or suggestions on that i want to chime in real quick uh, i've done a lot of youtube ads i'm not saying that i'm some kind of professional i understand what's going on the back on the back end some of them have worked and some of them haven't worked at all uh, but the, the ads, ads that, that uh, drive them to the web page where you have the remarketing tags, tags um, that, that seems to have worked well for us. us. But then, I guess, I guess it depends, depends on what you're going after. after. So, so, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely happy to talk to you about it, about it but, but um, uh, I'm familiar with it. Um, I want to chime in. I, I want to circle back to something else you said, Monica. Monica. You're not you're sure that you want to do it, but you think you should because everybody else is. Is, is your, your previous, previous marketing, marketing working? working? Well, well, see, it's, it's, it, there's a glass ceiling on it. So um, just to give you an idea of what I do, I actually do a lot of direct mail marketing pieces. I actually tap out of every single direct. Um, see, I, 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 I have a guy named Jay Peters. He gets me all of my lists. He gets, like, the best business opportunity leads to me. There's, like, nobody else who can get better lists. And so... Um, Unfortunately, I max out at a certain amount, so they come out every quarter, and I'm still waiting for the update for the first quarter. He's still he's kind of lagging behind this this time around because uh, we're already at April 16th, and he still doesn't have any updates yet. Usually, he has the updates within the first week of the following quarter. Um, but I max out at around 60 or 80 thousand leads a, a quarter. And then, and then I'm, I'm sitting, sitting around, around going, okay, who else am I going to mail to? Well, usually I'll start to mail on my better list. I'll mail an alternative, um, an alternative campaign, an alternative product line. But at the same time, though, the good list that he gets to me is that lower echelon business opportunity tire kicker crowd. And I need to start ratcheting it up a bit. So there's another mailing list broker by Impulse Media. They're called Impulse Media. There's a lady named Erin who I work with. And she's the underling of Laura, who's one of my other mailing list brokers. 
and I, and I get dentists who are heavy investors, investors. but that, that maxes out, out at even less every quarter. quarter. I mean, we're talking like maybe eight to 10,000 leads per quarter. So, so I'm, I'm stuck with, with okay, what, what else do I do? Do I, do? do I hit the glass ceiling and sit around staring at the walls for the rest of the quarter till the next quarter kicks in? Or do I find alternative methods to market? And that's why I wanted to ta talk to some of the dentists in this group about what kind of stuff gets your attention. Are you reading periodicals? Are you reading journals? Are, what are you guys reading? How do we reach you? Um, that would be my next question is, are you online? I don't think you're on TikTok. I kind of doubt it. You might be on Facebook. You may be on YouTube. But what, what are you, Dennis, reading? Or how do, I, how do we reach you with our message is the question. I think a lot of times, at least from a management perspective, the office managers and the office staff are the people that you would be reaching first. You know, you know, my, my staff, staff, they, they get, get the mail, mail. They, they sort my mail, mail. They, they go through everything, they organize what's mine, what's docs, what's, what's junk, what's, what's important. important. They, they answer the phone. So whether it's like a, you know, a calling kind of thing to attract them verbally to schedule some sort of a meeting um, or it's a mailing, the office staff is getting it first. And I would almost recommend having it marketable to the managers because for me and at least with my grandpa and I know it does work this way from most offices I'm the one that's going to go to him and say hey I saw this really great ad I really want to schedule this meeting is this something you'd be interested in or I have to go to him and justify why I'm going to be taking away from his patient time to schedule meetings or to read a document for why we need to buy something it has, right. to be that has to do probably with equipment and different things that you need with the office. What I'm going to be doing is talking to dentists who want to up their game on investing in investments. And that's going to be something that you probably will not be bringing to you, to your boss or to the, the dentist that's running your office. So that's why I get leads for dentists, their home addresses, because I don't want to deal with the office at all. I'm trying to cut you guys out of the equation altogether because this is the stuff you're going to shit can the very moment it crosses your desk. So, so I don't want to, I, no, no, no offense, but I don't, don't want to deal with you guys at all. You are the gatekeepers and you are keeping me away from the very people that I need to target. So my, my, then my question becomes, how do I completely circumvent you guys, no offense, and get directly to what the dentists are looking at as far as, because they're thinking different things. They're probably thinking about how do I get off this treadmill one day? How do I get passive income for myself so that I don't have to feel like I got to work 60 to 80 hours a week for the rest of my life? And so those are the types of conversations that some of these older dentists are starting to have because they realize that the cost of living has gone through the roof. They want to keep their current lifestyle intact, but they don't want to be working the same amount of hours forever that they are now. So that's the conversation they're already having. So, so I, know I know this conversation, conversation. So, now so now I have to see how can I sit with them at their kitchen table at 2 o'clock in the morning and have this conversation with them uninterrupted, and that's the big, the big question that I have. Can okay. I, as, 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 do you, do you know, know who Dr. Phelps, Phelps is? I was just going to say, do you, know, you follow David at all? Yeah, yeah I, I do. Okay. I, I know him fairly well. Okay, yes. all right. So, because he's all life after dentistry. Um, the other thing that I would suggest is you've mentioned dentistry often here is that there are other professions there's other categories that are even higher and better than dentistry um, um, I, I'd like to hear uh, Jim ring in on this I'd like to hear Rick uh, ring in on this and Melody because you're involved in those but one of the things I foresee happening in the future with independent dentists is, is I think they're gonna quickly become a thing of the past over the next 10 years so Number one, your message is good for that audience, but don't just specifically target that audience. So who's even above them, like plastic surgeons or, you know, brain well, surgeons? Dan and I had a conversation, had a conversation about avoiding physicians. He had a specific yeah. reason for this. He said that they think they know it all yeah. and just leave them alone. Yeah. Um, but, 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 you know, I did notice, though, that I do really well with attorneys, and I do really, really well with RNs, like registered nurses. I don't know why. I just tend to get a lot of lawyers and a lot of RNs. Um, what about chiropractors? Have you looked in that? Because they're not, they don't have that mindset that, that the physicians do that Dan talked about. Or what even about a nurse practitioner where they're 
there's, there's still, still that patient care, care aspect, aspect but they, they have more of that power, power like, like a doctor. Right. right. So I, I do attract a lot of those people, but again, at the end of the day, it comes to where are these people because I don't think that they're on TikTok and I really doubt they're like hanging out on Facebook or LinkedIn all day. So where are these people? Are, 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 do people really read trade journals anymore? I mean, that's just a question I just want to throw out there. Let me ask, Monica, can I ask you this? Let me just back up completely here. What is your in game with the people? Are you trying to put them into a syndication? Are you trying to make them private money lenders? Are you trying to sell them property or educate them? What are you trying to do? Well, well, what I want to do is, is with David Phelps, we, we have gone back and forth with this because I actually disagree with how he's, he's setting these tennis up. And that is he puts them into syndication deals. I'm like, it would take a lifetime for them to make any money. So what I do with my higher echelon clients is that I help, help them set up the entire enterprise where they can own their own property or at least have one or two partners and then have a management system in place to where they're not actively managing the property. They, they make, make a lot, lot more money than in syndication deals. deals. And, so and so I would want to help, help these people get involved in getting, getting a better return, return on investment by being a heavier and deeper partner, partner in these property deals, deals rather than just simply and merely uh, uh, getting dividend, dividend payouts like you would on a syndication deal. So, so um, you're, you're not feeding them the property. You're just telling them how to do it. You're. I actually do have quite a bit of partnership deals that would probably be a different level of a group that they would have to come into. I do have access to plenty of different deals through other students that I have finding deals for me as bird dogs. But, um, but you know, it would be either way. You want to learn how to find the deals yourself, I can help you do that. Or if you want to get involved in a bigger, probably more costly and more expensive type of inner circle group, and yes, I can start feeding you those deals that you would need to help you retire all. Does that make sense? Yeah. How, how much, what, what is your relationships with David? Phelps. I mean, how um, well, you, know, you know, we communicate back and forth every so often. I mean, it's not like, um, you know, we're besties or anything, but, um, you know, I mean, I, I just, like I said, I mean, I, I really do honor and respect how far he's been able to get. Um, it's just that I've never agreed with the types of deals, the types of setup and deals he's doing for his dentist. I think he's doing a great disservice to them. And it might just be my personal opinion. I don't know. But I, but I happen to know the background on what is the most profitable type of opportunity for property, for cash flow. The syndication is not, not it. And I just feel that he's doing a disservice to his dentist. But maybe that's what they want. Maybe they don't want to be that in-depth and that involved in these property deals. And that might be good for them. I don't know. But it just doesn't seem like he's given them the full story on. Well, that's option A, which is syndication. But option B is you can get a bigger chunk of the pie every single month in passive income if you do X, Y, and Z instead. You know what I mean? Like he's not telling that part of the story. Yeah. So, so, have you thought, thought about going, going to him and, and doing an affiliate, affiliate program, program saying, hey, look, not everybody wants a syndication. Not everybody wants to be that passive. So maybe you can refer people over to me and I'll pay you a, a fee and back and vice versa. There's some people you might run across. They want to be so hands off. They want nothing to do with it. You can pass them to him. Yeah. yeah. I have talked about that with him and he's a little stingy on, on his. Well, there's there's and I had thought about that, Rob, but there's a there's a challenge on David's side of it with the message that Monica right. would bring is that it could affect in a ripple effect of what David is doing. Uh, I mean, that was the first thing I thought of is, is that there's deals he's not selling. However, they've been, and he has a very in-depth, you've got to come to Dallas and you've got to basically get in bed with them and, uh, you know, hear all. So there's, there is a potential ripple effect. So I know, and David's very conservative that he would have a challenge with that going forward. Uh, um, what, what, are, are you able, aside from category or profession, Monica, are you able to, um, what does the avatar look like in demographic, psychographic? Do you have any idea? Because you mentioned lawyers and nurses. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Well, well, usually, usually with, with the lawyers and nurses, nurses I think for some reason attract more women, but they're usually women like, you know, 45 to 65. Um, but, but the vast majority of my demographics are um, white male over the age of like 55. It's just, I know it's surreal, but it, it is. That's like probably 80% of my demographic right there. Monica, I have a thought for you. <clears throat> Two things. Uh, I've worked with some dentists in the past 
and, and my, my daughter, daughter is a, a, is, is an EFTA, and, and she's worked at the, uh, all the practices she worked she's, she's worked, worked at are high end, and, and every, every one, one of them have had, had consultants come in to help them grow their practice and grow their profit margins. And so what about you connecting with those kinds of people that are delivering that service that know these these dentists and what their practice is like? These guys are uh, and gals are, are really looking to take their practice to the next level. So maybe you could work with those folks where you wouldn't uh, uh, infringe on what they're doing and, and, and you could possibly Get them, get them to share, share leads with you, with you and, and, and you do uh, whatever, whatever with them. them. The, other the other thing, thing I would share with you is I have a, a client who is a uh, CPA who works with attorneys, and she's a high-end CPA. And Ron, I think you know who I'm talking about, Borbala. And somebody like that would be a great fit for you. Uh, she is, she is uh, not inexpensive at all so her her uh, attorneys are making good money if you could connect with somebody like that to help you feed again their client list and what have you have you thought about that no i haven't that's that's um that's a really good idea have you thought about offering any sort of like a webinar to your clients maybe they have questions and they're not reaching out because for us at least in my industry we know that can, if we don't explain something very well, confused patients do nothing. Since we're talking about similar types of people, at least with nurses, maybe doing some sort of webinar where you're presenting something very specific that's attracting them, like one specific topic. I don't know if that's something you've done before. No, I, I've, I've done a number of different webinars, but I'm going to be re-ratcheting and changing my entire business model targeting a completely different so, so I have a suggestion. It, it's, it's probably a very basic one, one and it, it might, might get a laugh because, because of who everybody is here, but have you read No BS, uh, Marketing to the Affluent? Yes, yes I have. Okay. Um, and, and the other one is, one is um, uh, Emily, Emily Tran. Tran. Um, she is a dentist who um, uh, helps, uh, uh, who coaches other dentists to ramp up their, their business. business. So, so what, to what, what Dan said, doing a JV or something with, uh, with somebody who does, uh, works with the same demographic, demographic you're looking for. So Emily might be somebody to, uh, to reach out to. Uh, one, one, qu one question here to the dentist in the group. I know with my attorney, they have CLE, the continuing legal education that you have to do every year to keep up your licensing. Dentists, I assume, also have to have some sort of continuing education. Do they, do they get, get together, together in groups that they continue education, education or is it all online? Is there groups, groups where they get together and have a class? Um, some of them do, some of them don't. Some of them are online. A lot of the in-person CEs, we have um, a very big meeting in Chicago called the Midwinter. Um, it's a huge sale promotion. They also offer courses. Um, a lot of our networks, um, like our ADA, um, our hygienist, hygienist society, society, our dentist society, they, they offer courses, courses within themselves um, that are certified by them. By them. I'm personally in a membership for dental office managers, and they offer their own types of continuing ed, and uh, the networks, networks will also send you their certified courses that they'll accept. So we also have like a limited amount of what our licenses will accept. So, so if their licenses, licenses will accept things of that nature and you're going into a setting, into a room where they have to sit there all day and listen to something or learn, maybe you, maybe you could sponsor the lunch at one of those things and say, hey, you know what, you have 30 dentists here. Or if it's an online course, say, hey, your online course is $200. I pay $50 of that if you just have like a 10-minute intermission or something like that to get in there. But you already have a group of them together at that point if you're going after a dentist or attorney. If you already have good attorneys, there's tons of CLE stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to piggyback, piggyback on Dan, Dan Kirk's idea. idea. Um, you, you could use uh, LinkedIn sponsored in mail, and you, you could target the sales reps and account reps for the dental industry, and set up some kind of partner program or set up some kind of connection. Um, and I think that could work really well for you. Brian, can I ask you an additional question? Would that work for like hygienists and assistants as well? Um, yeah, um, yeah, I think, I think if they self-identify self on, on on LinkedIn, LinkedIn then, then yeah, yeah, you could do that. 
I, I, but I think because I, I know some some, uh, some, some people, that people that sell dental, dental products to dentists, dentists and, and they, they are, are very, very aggressive. aggressive. And, and, um, and, and yeah, yeah, I mean, partnering up with one of those with, with just one, one of them could get you a whole slew of uh, dental, dental practices. practices. Exactly. Yes, yes exactly. exactly. So in uh, I can interject from a, from a dentist's point, point not, not my, my own personal, because everything, everything you're talking about, about I'm outside, outside the box. box. OK, okay. Um, but, but I think the dental office managers um, organization is um, a good, good way, way to go, because many dental office, office managers are family members slash wives. OK, okay where, where they, they might have an ear. ear to the, to the doctor, doctor better than others. others. And, and it's, it's not, not going to be all of them, but it's going to be a number, number of them. And, and many, many of those also, if it's, if it's not family, family are probably working in high-end practices as well and, and may have a better relationship there. there. So, you're so you're not going, going right to the office, office but, but you're getting to the people who could, could bring, bring it to the office or bring it to the doctor. And at, and at least in my case, case I'm, I'm the anomaly, anomaly since, since I have more control over the business than he does. does. Not, not that he does, does but he, he, he focuses on patients, I focus on the business. It works well. well. Um, um, so, so for, for us, in our case, case that's why I presented it the way I did, because for me, I would be the one presenting it when we are moving. I'm the one presenting our budgets, our business plans, and I'm the one making those, where he's just... I'm going to treat, treat my patients, patients and I'm going to do a very good job at that, that so everyone's, everyone's happy. happy. And that's how, how it works for us. us. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, I wish I could give you, like, like so much more because, because I know a lot. I know a lot that could work. work. I just don't want to give you something that might not because I'm not entirely sure because there are things that I'm kind of working through myself. And I, and I don't have like that strong, strong data, data yet. So hopefully by next month in person, I'll be, I'll be able, able to give you some stronger data, data and actually like show you some numbers to work with. Right. Well, right. well I mean, I think we all know that marketing is one big experiment. You know, I, I do all kinds of, I call them experiments, not failures, or just they experiment with different stuff. So, you know, don't ever feel like you can't bring something because you think it might not work or you're not sure. It's just like, I think we all know the disclaimer, which is this may or may not work, right? That's just how marketing goes. Well, I, I got three ideas that I can I can suggest. So one one that we we started we did a test on was to um, we we wanted to create a program for the front desk uh, because most of the time I found when when I call a new dental office person and start asking questions they have no idea what they're going to say. Um, they have no idea how to collect information, how to do it, like none of it. So, so the first thing I did was I, to, in order to test to see if there was a market for doing training, was to phone a number of dentists, record the calls, send a copy of the, like a link to the call to the office manager saying, I called your office, here's what happened. And here's the, here's the link to the recording. And here's why you have all of this problem that we would like. And then, then we said that there's training available that is coming online. Um, right, right now, now here, here locally, the government, the government will pay for two thirds of it um, for, if for, for staff, staff that you have. And if you hire somebody new, they'll pay 100%. Um, the, response the response I got off that message from office managers was through, through the roof. roof. So, now so now we're, we're now, now we're building the program because we it was you know, sell it first, test it, and then build it. The second, the second one is I don't know if there's any way that you can take a portion of what you teach and turn it into something that would give them continuing ed credits. Because, because it, you're, you're changing, changing the message. message. So you're, you're no longer saying, saying this is my product. product. Now you're saying you, you have, have to have CEUs and, and we have this this course that you may be interested in. And maybe, maybe it's it's post-retirement for dentists, whatever, whatever, whatever it happens to be. be. So, so I would investigate that. that. The third the thing, and I'd, I'd have to think how to do this, but if there's a place that dentists go, I don't know if there's a big dental convention or something else, but um, one, of one of the things, things that, that we have ready to go, and of course we couldn't launch it because of COVID, COVID but um, every year for our, you know, you know one of our target groups is aftermarket automotive. And what we do is we have the Las Vegas Convention Center targeted for the five days of SEMA. And I only show ads 
people, people that, that I'm doing this with mobile, so I know I know their exact location. Because during those five days, I'm showing ads on the phones of people that own aftermarket automotive businesses that are in that building that live in Canada. They're the only ones that see the ads because I'm using a MAC address on the phone and I'm hyper local targeting them. Um, if you have a really strong um, headline that's part of your ad and you can get them to click through your site and get whatever your lead magnet is, um, we, we, we did it. We've done it once for a local automotive. Uh, well, like Jerry, so a automotive shop here. And what we did was we targeted the service drive through bays of every automotive dealership in the city of Calgary. And um, we, we blew up his business on him. So, um, you know, it, it can definitely be done. Uh, and his, his ads were, you know, are you tired of paying high dealership repair rates? Um, you know, Paul Franklin Auto. And, and, and he's swamped. To the point where actually before Christmas he asked me to turn it off because he was booked into January and wanted to take some holidays. So there's there's three different ways you can do that. But if there's, if there's a dental convention, and it's, and it's at, at a certain hotel, hotel for a certain period of time, just, just target the hotel, put a 500 foot circle around it, and anyone that goes into that circle for those five days are gonna see your ads. But make sure your headline is really strong. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. So. Go put flyers under all of the windshields of everybody at the hotel, just like Dan used to do. Yeah. Is that helpful, Monica? Yes. yes, thank you so okay. much. Um, I'll wrap up, Monica. Do you know, I would suggest that you get in touch with Jerry Jones in Oregon, uh, and I'll send you his contact if you don't have it. But uh, Jerry is uh, has a extensive dental list, and Jerry has transitioned into real estate, not your area, what you're talking about, but there are a lot of dentists that are looking to make that shift who don't want to go David Phelps' way. So there may be a... Uh, joint venture or something there that you can do with Jerry and Jerry is very open to that stuff so I'll send you his information if you don't have it but um, so okay all right good well uh, appreciate everybody I'm gonna wrap up with something that I want to show you that I was introduced to about three weeks ago that is um, um, how many people in the group just by a show of hands need to get more email <laughs> how many in the group want to spend more time checking their social media feeds and their social media conversations and all that kind of crap oh, oh sure yeah um <clears throat> so uh how many people in the group by a show of hands are familiar with the email marketing programs like infusionsoft or eye contact or aweber or constant contact okay so you're familiar with those and how they function and how they make your life easier in order to do email blasts. Well, I've been introduced to a system that's very similar and functions almost identically to all those email stuff. And um, a lot of you in the group have um, have Pete's direct mail Bible program. Um, Monica relies a lot on direct mail. She talked about that and so forth. Um, but I've been introduced to a program that's called Mailbox Power. And I think I have it here. Um, so Mailbox Power is a online portal to be able to do direct mail in the same sense that we do email blast marketing. So I want to kind of walk you through this and show it, introduce you to it, make you aware of it, um, because we all know the power of direct mail, of people getting stuff physically in their hands. Um, Richard up in Canada, you haven't gotten yours yet, but I mean, many of some of you have talked about it. Uh, some of you have have gotten the uh, the mug. Uh, you've gotten the uh, card. You got, I think you got this card that you received. And Monica mentioned about the bag of caramel corn. Uh, many of you will get the caramel corn tomorrow. It was intended to be to you before this meeting. But all of these pieces were sent to you via this um, mailbox power portal. And I want to walk you through it real quick, so, and, and you'll appreciate the real value to people like us, direct marketers, who want to be able to send mail. Now, not on the scale that Monica's doing direct mail, but who need to do and want to do more direct mail, but don't want to get involved in all of the headaches and hassle of that direct mail provides. So um, with Mailbox Power, 
it's a online portal. They also have a um, uh, smartphone app that you can put on your phone and you can do this stuff from there. And what the what they have is think of it as pre like a premiums like a uh, 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 what's the uh, what's the the product company. Um, uh, print no. promotional mm -hmm. items. Yeah, promotional items, that type of thing. But there's a company that does it, and you buy. Send out what is it? Send, send out cards. Send out, send out, out cards. cards. Yeah, send out cards is one. There's four, uh, four print or something like that. Uh, what this system allows you to do. So you mentioned David about send out cards. Is that the system has in here the ability for you to go in and be able to do a variety of different types of cards. Uh, you can build these cards five by sevens with envelopes. You can do eight and a half by eleven cards that are folded in half. So they're actually um, what is that? Eleven by seventeen uh, that go out. They have pre-templated cards. You can create your own cards. Uh, they have the physical promotional products uh, like the coffee mug that you guys received. So the coffee mug that you guys got was actually something that was built. We dropped the logo in it, and it went. Now, the beauty of this program is that this is a direct mail on demand. So unlike some, uh, Iana had mentioned to me about having to, uh, had gotten coffee mugs for the practice, but they had to order a stock of them. They sit, in, this is on demand. Um, so what this allows you to do is you can have inside of the system a address book. And Dan Cricks, this is something that is, will be huge for you with the auto repair guys. Um, this is going to be huge for the real estate, for insurance, any of that type of thing. But you can set up a database in here that you can automatically uh, you know, be able to set something up. I'll show you some, some samples. So for instance, the pieces that you guys got from me and Pete, these were actually created and set up as what they call projects. So here's the coffee mugs. There's the card up here. Once you have, if you want to send something to somebody, you simply can go in and do what's called a campaign builder. So when you go in and build a campaign, you can create that campaign and you can do as a drip campaign, an event campaign. They have a birthday campaign. So if you have birthday uh, date, a uh, month and date on clients and customers, you can set up a birthday campaign, set up a card, and the card will go out to them every year without thought. It's a set it and forget it. But once you have the campaign set up, you then just link it to a database, and you can send it out, drip to them, or event. Uh, and if you add new people into that address book on that particular campaign, it automatically does it. So let's say, for instance, uh, um, if I go into a client or a prospect and I meet with them, and after I get done, I want to send them a thank you card or a nice to meet you card, uh, I have to go to the store, I have to get a card, I have to write it out, I have to address it, I have to put a stamp on it. It's a bunch of hassle. With this, from my phone, I literally can go in, set it, send it to them, put their name address in, send it to them, and off it goes. Uh, this thing is, it, it takes the email marketing power but now gives us in direct mail, and we have stuff showing up. Um, Pete and uh, I have talked to Kennedy about this. Kennedy loves this program because it's direct mail. Um, we've done a ton of stuff. So just the, <coughs> just two days ago, I went in in order to promote for our uh, Gold Crown program. I went in and set up a card that I wanted to send out to people to a list, to a targeted list, um, I don't know. a card that, come on, oh, it's locked because it's already in process. Within an hour, I had it set up, and I've got 50 cards going out to a test list on this particular message, and it cost me 20 bucks. So, Dan Cricks, this is kind of like uh, your what you originally introduced with the um, voice broadcast stuff. It's that simple. So this, is, this takes and allows you to do direct mail on demand or to a broadcast list. Now this is a very, um, um, very simple system. There's two ways to join this program. They have a light membership. They have a pro membership. It's $9 a month for the light membership. It's $49 a month for the pro membership. 
if you go in and you look at some of the pieces parts that you've got um, I'm not sure so for instance if I go into my saved projects which is a project piece that I have created and I want to send it to somebody so let's say this giga card this eight and a half by eleven giga card I want to send that to somebody I simply can have it preset I add it to my cart I go to my cart that giga card will cost me three dollars and ninety nine cents for the card to be printed one and then the postage on it which will be fifty five cents I believe to send out all I simply do is then select what recipients I want to get it I hit go and it goes if I want them to receive this card and when the coffee mug and uh, uh, some brownies uh, I, I it's it's brain dead simple in how you can implement direct mail so uh, with the mastermind group Pete has in the past provided his done for you uh, postcard program and with the postcard, I know that Dottie's working with uh, Jim and Iana on getting that postcard going. I know that Charlie and Janet are doing that postcard. Rob's talked about doing it. It still comes down to the hassle of getting it to a printer, getting the printer to address, and getting them to the database and sending it out. <clears throat> Where I've taken it actually, you can do the done for you uh, postcard program that Pete has in this system, and within minutes, we have this stuff going out. And you add a new name, and it automatically happens. So this stuff is powerful. If you, if you want to do gifts, if you want to do gifts, they have boxes that can be customized. So this is a full box that can be customized, that you can send gifts, brownies, keys. There's a whole slew of stuff in here that can be done. One of the advantages is that I got, I received this from one the guy that introduced this to me. He sent me a card. Inside the card was a key, all tied in. The key is a can opener or a bottle opener, but also it comes with gift cards. With the gift cards, you can go in and they have available. Let's see if I can find them here. They have available in the store. You, they have gift cards for Target, for Subway, for um, uh, Cold Stone Creamery. There's a whole slew of gift cards that you can send out on demand with people. If you were to walk into a CVS drugstore, a Walgreens or so forth, and buy up 25 or 50 gift cards, it's going to raise a red flag as to what you're doing with these things. Here they can be sent out on demand. So this is something that I would recommend that if you're not doing direct mail, you try it, give it a try, play with it, send it out. You can, uh, you can actually uh, sign up and have a 14-day trial period. Give it a try, send it out, and see what you can do with it. If, if for nothing else, you set up a birthday campaign and you send birthday cards to people. Because I'll let you, I'll let you know. I'm terrible yeah. in sending birthday cards to people, but I know that I should. This right. thing is, once it's set up, it's done, and it sends it out year after year. So if you want to give Ryan, it a try, go to this web address. Um, mm -hmm. I will tell you, to full disclosure, it is an affiliate program company, and they have a fantastic affiliate program. So many of you, many of you have others in your business or other businesses that you know. You can introduce them to this program. They can get involved in this program and you can earn money from their membership and the stuff that they send out. So in full disclosure, it is an affiliate program and they pay regularly. They pay within 10 days of the last day of the month on other affiliates that you have under you. It's not a multi-level marketing campaign or it's not a multi-level marketing company. It's only one layer deep in affiliates so it doesn't keep going on and on. Um, um, you can track what pieces your affiliates are sending out if they're using it. But you literally could fund your marketing, your direct mail marketing, by having other affiliates under you. With the money that you may earn from the affiliates, you can take the money and you can bank it, but that's taxable. You want to refer to your accountant on that. But the money that you would earn from affiliates, you can bank. Or you can take that money and automatically roll that into what they call your wallet, 
which is the money that you spend by using the program. So you literally could fund your own direct mail marketing programs uh, um, just from having affiliates under you. Uh, the uh, do you copy paste your link into, into the, the chat? chat? I will. I will. Um, I was trying to understand the difference between that and we've been a long time user of Sendot cards and it looks like this is more customizable and uh, there's more options and I don't think I've ever had uh, the app although they say Sendot cards has a, an app it never worked for me yeah on Android this this app works fantastic um, I, I've been testing this for three weeks I've sending out like buco direct mail to people I'm getting immediate response back from people on uh, receiving the stuff. You guys have already received many of the pieces parts, and I wanted you to get those in advance so that you experienced it firsthand. Everything, everything is customizable. So anything you do is customizable. So for instance, the popcorn bag that you got, Monica, many of you will get the label on the outside of it, completely made up. So really, if you have a graphic designer or you can do graphic design on your own, you can, you can use this system. The app on the phone works fantastic. The online, the desktop version works fantastic. It works flawlessly. I've not had one bit of problem with it all the way along the line. So let me, uh, to David's request, let me put that in here. Any questions, any other questions? So, 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 it, 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 that I will heavily be using this app since I have boxes of birthday cards that I fill out every month. Yeah, you do not need to buy birthday cards anymore. It can be done for you. So I posted that. I share, that birthday card idea came from the mastermind group we had in October. That was one of the first things that I took from the meeting from Pete and Ron. We did birthday cards, anniversary cards, thank you cards. And now, and now there's a new system, system. so oh, I'm very excited and I, and I appreciate it a lot more since me, me and the two girls sitting in my office right now, right now um, we've, we've put a lot of hard work in to handwrite all of those birthday cards. Yeah. And, and, and another yeah. thing for you, Diana, we, we did it at uh, Rory Fat when we were in the restaurant. restaurant. They, do they do half birthday, birthday, birthday cards. cards. You, can you can probably get about only two months out of the year that you're not doing something and you could probably fill that in. With something, with something else, else. But, but there's half birthdays as well and then, and then do they can you, can you um customize, customize your card with photographs of like the, your, business your business or your people, people in your yeah. business you, I would, I would say yes. you could customize anything you want text images graphics photos anything you want you can customize right. any of these pieces and and put those in there so i actually have a postcard that we're going to be sending out pete and i to promote for membership in gold crown and inside, the, there's a picture you may have seen of Pete and I standing under a Success Road sign. I've posted that picture inside the card, along with then the copy. So everything is customizable, uh, most everything. When I say most everything, the cookies, the keys, that kind of stuff, you can't. Um, this system has fixed a major problem for me in my business, in that, and working with uh, Jim and Iana, we have videos to send out. And the big argument I get anymore is nobody has any DVD players. They don't have a way of playing the discs. Well, this system has allowed me to now, let's see if I cut over here. This has allowed me that I can now do QR codes inside of a letter. And that's the thing I forgot to mention about this program is that they have a document center in this program. So if you have letters that you're sending out to people on a regular basis, or you want to send out onesie twosies, you can import a Microsoft Word document into the system, and you can personalize it with um, mail merge information, first name, last name. Uh, you can customize merge fields, and all of that can then be merged into the document. For me, this will be a huge thing because I can enter in a QR code, and then once I have the QR code, then we can direct somebody over to a, um, uh, to a video and I'll show you that, it directs them to a set video uh, page that can be posted on your web page. It can be posted on a separate page from YouTube. This particular video you're looking at is hosted on YouTube, but it doesn't have to be, but it doesn't have all the other YouTube stuff. So this system from a direct mail standpoint has fixed a problem with how I send videos. 
it's not going to change me sending out physical videos but now I can send a physical mail piece that allows somebody to access the video via their smart device okay so two questions, two questions. Go ahead, Rob. Go ahead, Rob. When you did that mug, which is a cool mug, I do. It's my new favorite mug. I drink out of it this morning. morning. I just didn't have it on the call with me. Do they, do they send you a um, a, a prototype to make sure it's not blurry or pixelated or anything like that? Or is there someone you can physically talk to there that they'll say, "Hey, yeah, this looks fine." There is there is a support there, but here's what I did. So before you guys got those, I made one and I sent it to me and I sent it to Pete. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. That's, cool. that's what I probably do as well. Yeah. And there's, and there's also because of video, I received these video cards in the mail, and I, I don't know you probably seen, seen them. them. You, open you open it up, and it just plays, plays the video when you open, when you open it. it. I think your QR, QR is probably much more cost effective and easier, and easier but, but yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah, for for Rob, for Scott, and that in the system, I, I'm not finding it real quick, but they have preset campaigns for certain industries, real estate, insurance financial so there's preset campaigns there's preset cards there are preset stuff gifts and that in there so I highly recommend that you go give it a try sign up for the 14 day free trial send yourself some stuff and see what it looks like and see if it's worthwhile and if it's not hey no harm no foul but it's a way of being able to do direct mail without all the hassle and the headache um, I like I said I sent out 50 promotion cards within an hour of making the damn thing up, putting in an address list and sending it out. And if I get a response from it, guess what? I'm just gonna keep adding more lists to it and keep sending the thing out. And I don't have to go to a printer, I don't have to stuff envelopes, I don't have to stuff, uh, uh, you know, put stamps on anything, it's done for them. The company's out of Utah, they have on their site a map that shows you what the anticipated delivery time is from where they're shipping it. Now the one caveat on that is that the mugs, the mugs that you guys received and the and the and the caramel corn, that stuff came by priority mail, U.S. Postal. Uh, Rick, your mug hasn't made it yet because it's in Canada. Um, it's on its way. Um, Ryan, your mug actually came back to me because the address <laughs> was incorrect. So I'll get this out to you, but. Um, that's what I've been doing. So, Rob, to answer your question, I've been making shit up and sending it to myself and see what it looks like. In doing so, I found out the how to with the font sizes and all that. Mm -hmm. It's damn simple. The only caveat is the U.S. Postal send in first class. So, this card that you guys got, the the, the amazed card, um, that came in this envelope, that actually was the first piece. You guys got it second, but that's because it went first class. So the fix on that is just allow more time. So, and, you, know, Monica, you know, Monica, that's, that's for, you for you to send that, to send, that, to send just a mug to a dentist office. office. I mean, they're I not going to throw it away. It's going to sit on the desk, even if they go up the front desk and drinks from it. From talking about, you know, don't retire broke. You know, send out to 50 dentist offices, then hit the dentist and hate you get the mug sent to your office. Yep. Put Dave, Dave Chappelle, Chappelle on there instead, instead of I'm rich, bitch. I'm retired, bitch. There you go. Get back and interrupt. Hey, hey Ron, just, just to shoot out one more idea regarding, regarding we used the QR, QR code, code with send out cards, and it, you know, you know we did that, and, and, it, and it brought you to a video. video. But uh, they have also, and this I'm recalling from the RMS, RMS days with Lori in the restaurant, they have a personal URL. I don't, we've never implemented it, but if you have a database, you can have a personal, like your last or first name, and it shoots you to whatever you need. To. And I don't know how it works. We've never used it, but I'm just throwing it out there for you to consider as well. It's very personalized. Yeah, yeah because you just write your name in. I think Dan, Dan Cricks would remember that. Right, Dan? Yes, I do remember that. Ron, I was going to ask, you know, I'm about to mail like 50 billionaires next month. And uh, I'm wondering. I'm thinking just for simple follow-ups when you already have a relationship with someone, uh, this would be a perfect solution. If you're doing very, very custom personalizations where the items are just not something they'll send, then you can always just use your fulfillment house. Yeah, you could. Um, there's one other thing I want to show you on this that is really, really neat. Okay, and uh, I've had this conversation with Mark Sims in the past with regard to direct mail. Let me switch over here. They have in here, um, if I can find it, they have two things in here that are of interest. Number one, they have a person finder, and I would imagine that this is tied directly to the uh, U.S. Postal Service list. 
but you can literally come in here and type in, so I'm going to use you, Pete. If I type in Pete Lillo, and I know he's in Cuyahoga Falls, oh. Ohio, and I do a search, it will return to me a search, and the first two on here happen to be Pete's address. All right, so there's other ones in here, but I can track it down. The other thing that I think is really, really neat about this system I've not seen is you can do, you can build a mailing list. All right, so you can pick if you want to do to individuals or you want to do to businesses. I'm going to pick individuals here, but once I do that, I can then target new homeowners or I can do new movers, specifically for the real estate that's helpful. I can then go in and then select geography. What geography do I want to do? So if I want to do it in and around my uh, my residence here, I set that up and then I can go in and I can select demographics. I can select households. Do I want multifamily, single families? What length of residency is there? What's the income level? Are they a homeowner or a buyer? I get into personal data. Male, female, uh, marital status, the ages. Uh, bottom line is I can go through all of these selects and generate out a mailing list. And you'll see up here, based on what I have selected so far, there's 16,933. I can, if I wanted to buy the entire list, it's going to be $1,242.19. I can buy the list, get the list, import it into here, or use it. So you literally could get into targeting. Uh, Rob and Scott in the real estate business, if you wanted to do the old five houses around a specific address, you literally could target in a microscopic view. So this is, this is I've not seen tied into a program like this. So there's a lot of value and benefit. Oh, the other thing, Monica, in here I did see from the businesses, I don't know if it would be helpful for you. Let me see if I can clear this out. But they have... I know you, you want to get away from them. Can't find it. They actually have opportunity seekers. They have that as a specific select on a list. So again, my recommendation is sign up for it, try it out, play with it, see if you like it, if it's useful, continue on with it. If not, no harm, no foul. Hey, Ron, hey, Ron I, have I have one question for you, for you because, because you have, I, can I can tell you, tell you have a better camera than the rest of us as you're sitting there with the blurred out background stuff. stuff. Do, they Do they make an aftermarket, aftermarket um, um, Lens, lens for, for the, the uh, computer, computer uh, uh, no. cameras. cameras? No. 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 Okay. okay. So the camera, <clears throat> the camera that you're seeing me through is actually a DSLR, that's yeah. tied directly into the computer. So okay. Okay. there are some lights and so forth, um, but yeah, it's a it's a DSLR that's going directly into the computer because it's got a true camera lens, and that's why you're getting the effect. It's a much clearer image. Um, my feeling was is that as the video guy. I damn well better have this right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Uh, That's right. You better. Be better. Now, I have Monica. Monica. Um, um, instead, instead of a coffee cup, cup at this time, time if you're, if you're going, going for something, something that's, that's going to sit on the, sit on the desk, desk at the dentist's dentist office, office, they're using, using that pencil pen sign-in thing, thing, and they, and they have like a clean pen and a dirty pen, like a used pen and an unused pen. And everybody has that on the countertops now because you don't want to touch something somebody else touched. So, so that would definitely be sitting, be sitting right, right up front where, where everybody would see it. Is it going to send things to dental offices, Monica? My favorite thing to get from businesses, and Jim doesn't drink, but my favorite thing to get is actually wine, because with all of the stress and the patients and the BS that we deal with all day, that's the one thing that we never get from patients, from clients, patients, Bring, bring us food, food. they bring, bring us drinks from, from other countries. countries. When patients, patients travel, they'll bring, bring us all these things, things from other countries. countries. That's, That's the one thing we never, we never get, get that, that would be very, very helpful to us. us. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Thank you for that. Yeah, of course. So, bribery he's works in, is what you're saying. He's in, he's he's in, in the office, office. I own it. <laughs> <laughs> we also have nitrous that, but we don't do that because it's not ethical. <laughs> but, if but if it was, was ethical, ethical, we'd be sitting, we'd be sitting on, on nitrous, nitrous ourselves. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, um, any last questions before we wrap this up? Keeping an eye on the clock here. All right. 
Um, I'm going to send out after we're done. I'm going to repost this recording. So if you want to watch it back and to those that didn't attend, uh, I'm also going to have the dates and times and all the specifics for next month's meeting, a location link for the hotel uh, to go ahead and make a reservation there, get your travel arrangements. Uh, I'm also going to, as an added thing, Dottie's going to follow up with each of you by telephone and find out if you're coming to get confirmation on that. And as a member, you have the ability to bring a plus one, so a key uh, staff person, a spouse, or whatever with you. Uh, so we just need to get a count for the hotel uh, for next month and if you have any specific food requirements. All right? Do you have a block? Do you have a block at the hotel? There is not. It's, it, when going into this, it was so small, we did not do a block. And um, unlike, unlike with all the Kennedy events where we always did it at the same hotel, um, that hotel we used to be at, which they've gone, they're no longer there. Uh, so I'm still in search of a hotel to be able to service well. Uh, we're going to be at the Doubletree again because we've used them before and I've used them, but they're not necessarily going to ne be the home hotel right now because we've had some challenges with them. So um, um, going forward with the size of the group, yeah, we'll probably do a block, but we don't have one right now. It was only, it was only $69, $69 a night when I registered while we, while were, we were talking, we were talking here today. today. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Well, well, usually with a block of rooms, you have to have a minimum number to block out. So last time we didn't have enough. Um, so we'll, we'll look into that for future reference. I just wanted to know if there was something we needed to mention. No. Okay. No. I mean, you can mention it. Yeah, you can mention it. And if they don't hang up with you, hang up on you, then just go ahead and register the room. Doing that, Doing that well. well huh? <laughs> All right, gang, I appreciate you spending the time with us today. And uh, from what I heard, um, we didn't we didn't have a chance. To, uh, David uh, Newby jumped in uh, later on the call there, so we didn't get a chance to introduce him. But David's a new member in the Mastermind, and David's in Michigan. Hopefully you'll be joining us next month here in Cleveland. Uh, but we'll we'll get you uh, introduced in that uh, on the next on the next call. You, you had something you want to say, David? Oh, I was oh, curious. I was curious. Um... I heard on a call a couple months ago, there's a plugin tool you can use on some browsers to find people's best mailing address. I'm actually looking to send a package to uh, Onyx and Gall, and I think I have Yannick Silver's best address. But I heard there's like a plugin tool to track down mailing addresses. I'm putting a name with that. You can use those kind of things to track down physical mailing addresses. I already checked Onyx site. Uh, it doesn't have a physical mailing, just a bunch of um, different emails. If you look, if you at, look the at the bottom of one of those emails, probably, probably for the, the opt-out, it probably has a mailing, a mailing address, address on there. there. Mm -hmm. a, a physical mailing address. address. Yeah, I've yeah, seen, I've seen that a lot of people's emails have them on the emails. Not all of them, but most people do. Yeah, I remember. I'm just talking about this plugin. Yeah, I'll just opt in on a couple of his things and do that way. I mean, off topic, I mean, for me, we do skip tracing because we're in the real estate business. I've got wicked skip tracing tools. You give me his name and city, I can help you out. Go reach out to me privately. Okay, cool. Yeah, I used a couple of those back in the day in the real estate days, so that's cool. It'd be good to hear what's working the best now. Yeah. You bring up a good point, David, too, that I didn't mention. With the mailbox power thing, they do have uh, APIs for certain um, third-party systems that you can do. So, okay. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for spending the time. Pete, you have anything? You've been really quiet, which is unusual. You have anything you want to add as we wrap up? Well, uh, I got a suggestion for the college range. Uh, get a pick up a Wall Street Journal today. Uh, we got a subscription. It's on the front lawn right now. Mansion section. They talk about Pittsburgh. Oh. You got, you got a, a whole article in there about Pittsburgh, about the condo church in Pittsburgh. Might be, Might be interesting for you guys to look at that. Thanks, Thanks Pete. Pete. We certainly, we certainly will. will. And, and uh, uh, just uh, uh, this is I, I, I like, to, I like say to say this, this but this, this is one of the best virtual meetings I've I've been to in a long time. We've had a, this has been a great meeting. I mean, I, mean, uh, I, don't, I don't like, I don't like virtual meetings, meetings myself, but this is. Uh, <laughs> hope everybody got everything got something out of this today. today. And I know and next month is going to be a great, great mastermind meeting. Uh, as, uh, as we're building this, I'll let you know this. We had, we had 16, 16 new members, members join Gold Crown this week. week. 
and, and, and three this morning. So this is growing fast. A lot, a lot of great people, people are getting into this. A lot of Dan Kennedy, Kennedy Old Guard members are coming back. And this, and this is what I'm working on. Uh, I, like I like the Old Guard members because they really appreciate Dan Kennedy, Kennedy appreciate, appreciate our style, style of marketing. So uh, as, as this grows, grows you're going to be around a lot of people like yourself. And like yourselves. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I like the mastermind concept more than I do the seminar concept. We've done both. Uh, uh, some are, are kind of, kind of passe, passe now, now with the thousand member thing. thing. Uh, people, uh, people want to get into the more personalization of, of masterminds, where there's smaller, smaller groups, and, and uh, you, get you get more out of it. And, uh, and uh, we've, we've got, got a price now that we're just the master, master level six, six uh, in, our in our group. group. It's, uh, it's reasonable. reasonable. I, we, we want just people to participate. participate. That's the biggest thing with us. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have dinner with Dan and Carla tonight, tonight. My, my, uh, my wife and I, and uh, I'll relay this to him. To him. He's, excited He's excited about this millionaire, millionaire uh, mailbox, mailbox program. program. Uh, also, also the, he, likes he likes the Dunk for You concept. We started the Dunk for You concept when we first started, Dan. It's one of those things where it's very difficult for people to do the things themselves. They want somebody to do it for them. You're busy. You'd like to just... Put it, put it off and put it, give, have somebody do it for you. And, uh, and uh, we're, we're always on the lookout for programs like this. So this, this works well. We're, we'll work we're working with it, with it and see how it goes. There are other programs out here. Uh, we're going to incorporate our programs in with these. And uh, hopefully they can help you guys uh, run your businesses. And that's, uh, that's the key. That's why we're here. Thank you, Ron. You're welcome. And kudos, kudos to Richard because he's already taking fast action. <laughs> so don't don't let don't let the people in Canada outdo us in the U.S. <laughs> so all right, gang, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you next month here in Cleveland. If you have any questions, okay. give me a email, drop me an email, drop Dottie an email, drop Pete an email. But I'll send out an email with a link to playback as well as information for next month's meeting. All right, thank you everybody. Thank you. Have a great. Thanks, Lon. You're welcome. Doing this. Have a great weekend. Thanks, everyone. Right. Great. Great night, everybody. Bye bye.